Hi, I'm Bill Corcoran Jr. This is the On The Stacks Podcast. Oh yeah, whoa, look, they can never keep me down, I'm going, and if I ever fail to snow, I'll go again. I never quit, because I know that every loss may lead to another win, I'm going up. Like, honestly, I was scared to let my family down, and my family is more supportive than anybody now, so... I definitely was wrong about that. But I don't know where that belief stems from, though, that, like, you're going to be worried about what people think. Like, why is that deeply rooted within all of us? Like, why is that just a thing that happens? I have a theory. And I think this theory isn't just mine. I know it's not just mine because I've adopted this theory from other theories. But I think it's because of our, like, tribal nature. Mm. Like, we're meant to survive in tribes. Yeah. And so if we go against the grain, we might be condemned in a way we might yeah. be. Yeah, yeah, so like, like like you like he said like Kevin said like you might be letting your tribe yeah like you might be yeah. you might be letting your family down yeah and and in, in that case in that case like if you were alone that means you were to die yeah you know and at that time of life survival thing maybe that's like when I was holding on to a lot of that like self conscious bullshit where I was like just scared of what other people thought about me but that was at a completely different time of life for me like I've evolved so much since high school and like those days where I felt that way and. Today, I'm chatting with Darian Tyson and Kevin Kasky, entrepreneurs and co-hosts of the Go-Getters podcast. This episode is brought to you by the Pest Rangers. Finding insects in your home can be a real pest. I know I felt that way when I discovered termites living rent-free in my house. But thanks to the team at the Pest Rangers, I'm no longer bugging out over this issue. So if any creepy crawlers are cramping your style, there's no if ands or bugs about it. you got to call the Pest Rangers. For more information on how to rid your home from unwanted pests, Call the Pest Rangers today at 570-826-1114 or visit them online at thepestrangers.com. This episode is brought to you by Kavanaugh's Grill, one of my favorite places to eat and drink in any PA. They've got one of the best outdoor patios with 13 TVs and over 20 beers on tap. You can also dine inside at this cozy Irish-style pub where your beer never goes empty. Did I mention how delicious their food is? Their in-house smoked brisket, barbecue ribs, and wings are to die for. So grab your friends and have a drink on me at Kavanaugh's. Mention code STACKS for one free draft beer with purchase of any entree when you dine in. Located at 163 North Main Street in Mountaintop, Kavanaugh's is open at 4 p.m. during the week and 12 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday during football season. Dine in today at Mountaintop's only Irish-style pub. This episode is brought to you by Burn, the fitness company behind the Today Show approved Burn Board. If I'm being honest, working out can be a real chore, especially as a new dad in desperate need of sleep and cardio. Burn is founded by NEPA native Jimmy T. Martin, and his Burn Board offers a low impact core and cardio experience unlike anything I've done before. They have hundreds of on demand workouts that are great for beginners, seasoned athletes, and out of shape podcast hosts who love supporting small businesses. My wife and I use it pretty frequently throughout the week, and it's honestly a great way to burn a ton of calories without burning a ton of cash. Not to mention, it's a great tool for skiers, runners, wrestlers, and hockey players. Jimmy is offering all On The Stacks listeners 15% off when they use the code STACKS15. Visit theburn.com today to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15 at checkout. Again, that's the burn, T H E B triple R N dot com to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15. It's time to get on board today with Burn. What's up, podcast? It's Bill Corcoran Jr., host of the On the Stacks podcast here in the Blue Door Studio, protected by our friends at Richie Security Solutions. Darian and Kevin, welcome to the show. Boom. Boom. Come on, man. On the Stacks. Oh, yeah. Boom. How you doing? The goat chain. (laughs) Bill Corcoran on the Stacks. This is it. Come on. Right here. Let's go. Yeah. Yes, sir. So when you drop some um, gold nuggets, you get to rock the chain. Try on the the goat chain. The nice. gold nugget goat chain. Yeah, that's nice. tough. But I mean, I think you guys already deserve it for your uh, your actions prior to. You guys were a little bit late today, but but yeah, but for a, for a good reason. Yeah. You know, you guys were out there. The go getters are out there <laughs> saving dogs. <laughs> right. Gotta got do what yeah. you can. It's a funny duty. A uh, funny story. Sometimes duty calls. Yeah. And uh, should we tell the story yeah. right now? Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, we had a big day today. We're coming to do On The Stacks podcast. Mm. And we're riding down Kevin Street. And in the middle of the street, there's this dog. And the dog's like shivering. And it looks like it's in bad shape. And it's yeah. in the middle of the road. So we couldn't go even if we wanted to. Mm. And me and Kev kind of looked at each other like, damn. We both knew like we had to do something. And uh, so we got out of the car. And 
dog was in bad shape. So we just took the dog in. We ended up taking it to um, a 24-hour like animal hospital. But, I mean, it, I think it was the best thing we could have done. Yeah, right? I mean, in the moment, there's really nothing else we could have done besides just leave or do something to help. So Right. Yeah. Sometimes life gives you those little side quests, though. Yeah. I think they mean a lot. So yeah. Sometimes duty calls. You guys did the right thing. Yeah, no doubt. And yeah. Because of that, I'm rocking your favorite college. Oh, uh, yeah. State. Boo. Yeah. yeah let's go. <laughs> yeah. Um, un- unfortunately. So you, so, you, like, so you guys are saying you guys didn't even get a chance to change. Like, no. you actually weren't going to wear that ugly that ugly red no, shirt. And absolutely not. Yeah, not this thing true. either. I literally right? had to throw this whole fit together. Well, not even the whole fit. I literally just changed my pants. That's all I got to do. Yeah. Got to run inside, and then we had to run right back out. So got the corporate get up. Yeah, or... I'm rocking the, the corporate <laughs> get up. <laughs> I'm rocking the corporate fit right now. I wear this to, to work today. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even get the opportunity, but man, I'm here. I wouldn't rather be anywhere else. So yeah. let's go. Seriously. We Thank made you it. for having us. We made it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, I'm pumped to have you guys here. No I, doubt. Uh, you guys are doing awesome things, and thanks for having me on your show. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah uh, for sure. Thank yeah. you for coming, man. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. 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 I love what you guys are doing. I love the name. Yes, sir. You know? Go get us. Yeah. I think you got you guys work together so well. Yeah. Your cousins. I, yeah. yeah. That's why it's like it's crazy because Kevin tell you too, like we have a crazy chemistry. Yeah. Like sometimes we don't even have to say the words to each other. I can just look at him or he'll just look at yeah. me and I'll know like, okay, this what this was this was going on. Yeah. You know? And that's what all things that's what like when it comes to looking at each other when the dog was in the middle of the road, we both knew like, okay, we gotta handle this mm. situation. You just like looked at each other and you knew like you're just like yeah. Yeah. we're doing this. We have to figure it out. Same thing with business. Yeah. It's a blessing and a curse sometimes though, because we have a lot of similar beliefs on a lot of things and a lot of similar tastes and paths that we want to go so kind of similar to what we were talking about on our podcast yesterday it's like you don't always get to bounce around ideas the best when we're both on the same page as much as we are most of the time so yeah so it works very well though for the most part that is true that's a good point but yeah ever since like wow man how far could we even go as far as we can remember we were playing together playing a game playing football everything so it goes back Way further than just a podcast. Yeah, 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 literally, bro. Since like I can't even remember me and Kev. I remember there's a story like me and Kev. Our first like thing we did together was play with Matchbox cars. And <laughs> his, his dad, when he used to leave my house, his dad used to strip his diaper yeah. down, shake me down. He would be taking all my cars, and pocketing like them. Yeah, <laughs> putting them in the diaper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, man, it's crazy. I remember one time. This is crazy. I don't even know if I ever talked to you about this story, but I remember one time, him and I were like fighting over something, and I think. One of us was like, all right, well, I don't want to be your friend anymore. And I mean, bro, we were like three or four. Like we were young, maybe five, something like that. And one of us was like, you, I don't even want to be your friend anymore. And I remember going by a window and just being like, damn, I just lost my friend. And I went up to him and I was like, yo, sorry, man. Like, I don't think we should not be friends anymore. I don't, I didn't even, I don't even know, but I just apologized. And he yeah. was like, yeah, we could just be friends. And we just <laughs> kept, kept being friends. <laughs> just like that. Yeah, That's so on the stacks will be back in a flash after a word from our sponsor. It's a common question to say, what is my case worth? We need to figure out the extent of what that personal injury is and what it's going to be. We need to find out what insurance coverage is available on the vehicle that struck that person. So my recommendation would be just to be patient, communicate with your lawyer, your lawyer should communicate with you. We do a great job of doing that. And we'll figure out what it's worth. And now we're back on the stacks. And you're a couple years older. No, I'm just a year older. Oh, just a year? Yeah, it's, yo, he was born on December 14th. Yeah. I was born on November 14th. But I'm 2000. He's 2001. Yeah. Ah, I see. Yeah. So. Dang, you guys are young. Yeah. yeah. It makes me feel old. Legit. Yeah, Dang. it's weird. It's weird because a lot of the people we surround ourselves now are, it seems like, are a lot older than us. Just yeah. because of, like, ventures and everything we got going on now. Like why? Like give me like 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 what? Like what was it that you know? You don't like. There's not a lot of people your age doing. Yeah, that's doing, real. Doing the things that you're doing yeah. or trying to do. Well, yeah, but I would say like the only person I think we did a podcast with was this kid named Yuri Covington that I actually went to school with. He played basketball, so he's my age. But besides that, the next Walter. closest and oh yeah, Walter too. Walter, Walter too, is though. younger than us, isn't he? He's your age. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, but we found him out of the blue. Yeah. And it's crazy, but like I would say 90 some percent of the guests we've ever had were probably 30 plus. Okay. All right. So I don't feel as bad then. No. Some of the 30 plus category. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think like a lot of what we're doing now is we're like, we're seeking like mentors. Like yeah. A person like you. We're seeking people who are more experienced and a little wiser than we are. And so oftentimes those guys are a little older than us and they could like guide us like on all things, like yeah. not only just business, but just being young men and everything. So we're just looking at people who could guide us in a good direction to get to where we want to go smart bro yeah mm. no doubt yeah 
I knew you guys brought you guys in here for a reason. Oh yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And vice versa. No doubt. Same. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a quote. My my buddy Berlin told me this, and he said, "You're never too old to learn. You're never too young to teach." Mm. You know, so I I'm in a school. I work with like young kids, and sometimes I'm learning from them. Sometimes they're updating me on like culture. They're updating me on trends. They're updating me on like their generation and how they see the world. So I'm learning from them. Mm. You know, it's so true. Same thing with like young kids, because sometimes when we get older, bro, we, we lose sense of our like creativity and our imagination. So yeah. you spend enough time with a young kid and you're like, oh, man, I'm, I'm missing that. That's something you should never like lose sight of, because we can always have a sense of childlike tendency to us. I think it's very fresh. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and like just, you know, to kind of piggyback off of what you said, like. You know, even when I first met you guys, I even looked at it like there's probably things that these guys can teach me about, you know, my show. Like, yeah. you know, even though, you know, you know, my show, I've been doing this for a few years. You guys have been doing it for like under a year. Right. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like, you know, I look at it as like, just like you said, you can still learn from somebody yeah. that's yeah. younger than you. Mm. You know, like it's yeah. it, it doesn't you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't always it's not always just the yeah. other way. It's like. I look at it like, mm-hmm. hey, these guys can teach me something too. Yeah, I think that's where. Plus, you bring the energy, no doubt. <laughs> Come on, man! <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Um, I think though that's what that's what separates like the entrepreneurs from the people who are really doing it. Because at some point, people get uh, like older and they become stubborn. Like, I, I can't le- learn nothing from yeah. this young kid. So if you keep that in your mind, like, nah, I could learn something from them. There's always room to learn. There's always room for improvement. That's where you really start to separate yourself and like really attain success. You know what I mean? Never losing sight of that. Like I can always learn. I can always improve. Yeah, and you have that too. So hundred percent. That's why we're going to the moon. First podcast on the moon. Who's gonna right. get there? Oh we're yeah, doing we're it. Get yeah. There. yeah, not the moon, Mars. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. even like for us though, like we can bounce so many ideas off of each other. So we can learn so much from you. You can learn so much from us. Similar to what we were talking about. I mean, literally every time we link, it's like, who else do we know or is in our immediate circle that's really trying to do the things we're trying to do? Mm-hmm. So who else is surrounding yourself around within the people that are literally doing it and they're paving the way for you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just the collaboration part, like, you know, like, you know, you know, like I'd say our shows are kind of somewhat similar in the sense that like, you know, it's about people yeah. and like the grind and entrepreneurs yep. and like all that. But like, you know, some people might look at us like, oh my God, like these guys are competitors. Like, not really. Nah. Like, like we're all, we're, we're, yeah, we're doing mm. the same thing, but like we're not competitors yeah. and we're, we're, we're here to help each other and grow and grow yeah. together. And yeah. Like we can do so much, like people, I think a lot of people just have that have that backwards sometimes and don't realize like you partner together and just do stuff together it's gonna help you both oh yeah yeah. especially with podcasting and that's so true like today all the biggest podcasters in the world got big from doing collaborations with other podcasters it's a way to do it yeah no doubt and i think uh the other the latter stems from a scarcity mindset yes they think that if he's winning i can't be winning Mm. but in reality there's enough pie for everybody you know so in this specific case, you're shedding the light on us. We're shedding the light on you, and we both get to grow. We both get to elevate yeah. and grow our brands. And also, can we talk about this collab? Can yeah, we talk ev- about yeah, this giveaway? Yeah, yeah, hold on. Everybody wins. Yeah, everybody yeah, wins. Everybody Absolutely. wins. Everybody, everybody eats. By the way, a- a- anything that we, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Right, but cool. basically, everything that we're doing, already done, have done, are going to continue to do. Literally, everybody's going to win. Yeah. Not just us. Yeah. But like our listeners, mm. people that don't even know anything about us, and I'm I'm setting you up for. For what uh, at this point, by the time this show, this episode comes yes. out, that this this other collaboration that we're doing, which is huge, it's huge, huge. big yeah. time, it will already have like happened and be done, and <laughs> hopefully it's gonna be not that I'm not doubting it's not gonna be a success. It's definitely gonna be a success, yeah. but hopefully it's a uh, much bigger success than we ever hoped. So yeah. God, roll with it. You want me to do it? Yeah, whatever. Oh man, Go I ahead. get the privilege. All right, cool. So it was actually, I mean, this was actually this was your idea. Yeah. How do we figure this out? I don't know. You just, you just tossed, I, I just said like, let's figure out, let's do some type of yeah. giveaway. Yeah. Like I think I might've originally said like, let's, you know, we'd already met by the way, everybody, for everybody that's listening, we already yeah. met like, and just got together a couple of times yeah. in person just to, you know, bounce ideas around and then mm. learn from each other. And then, and I was like, yo, we should like try to do some type of giveaway yeah. to help boost each other's show. And yeah. then, and then you, you threw back at me. Threw a bone to him. You did. <laughs> yeah. The I big, bone. big bone. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was just like, yo, what if we just, man, what if we just gave away a PS5? How cool would that be? Like, how cool? Like, imagine the look on somebody's face when you gift them a brand new PS5. Yeah. Imagine what that'll do for the brand. It, I mean, it's right like before a, Christmas, too. Yeah. yeah, right before Christmas. That's the biggest part because you're really giving. And like, to me, that just checked all the boxes. Hmm. Like, one, we're growing our brand. Two, we're 
like literally blessing somebody up before Christmas. Yeah. Three were, I don't know. It's just big time. It's yeah. all, it's just Boom. so good. All, <laughs> it's so good all around. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Like, it's just so good. And like, I have Pockets to. Pockets might hurt a little bit, but. Yeah, but like, right. but, it, but like, it's gonna, it's gonna, what's, what we're gonna, what's gonna come out. It's gonna be so far. We're, we're not even, yeah. gonna, we're not even gonna worry about that after. Yeah, for and sure. I have to admit, like at first, like when I remember when you first texted me and I'm like, yo, that's like, that's a lot. And it's wild. Yeah. I was like, oh man, like, you know, I mean, we're splitting it. So like, yeah. it's not like, you know, it's like one person paying for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But at first I was like, I don't know. But then I was like, I can't even believe I even like doubted it for a second yeah. that we should do it. Cause I kind of did at first. I was like, I don't know. Should we spend that mm -hmm. kind of money? Yeah. And you know, Kevin and I really like playing video games. So that just kind of fits within our realm as well. Cause we're, we're going to be building a gaming channel pretty soon. So Dope. that'll be cool. Like people will get to see that yeah. and how that leads into go getters gaming. Mm -hmm. Right. Have you ever done anything like that prior though to this whole PS4 giveaway? Uh, no, nothing. You're no. doing it right now though. You're doing a giveaway right now uh, for Thanksgiving. Right? Yeah. Well, that's just like a, some swag. Nothing yeah, crazy. Some drip. Yeah. Nothing. Some nothing crazy. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, nothing at the PS5 level. <laughs> the reason, nothing. Yeah. Nothing at that level. Yeah. No. I honestly, I, I don't think there's. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I've given away some some swag mm -hmm. here and there, but um, no, I don't think I've done it. Like this is this is like we went zero to a hundred real yeah. quick. Yeah. The reason I bring that up though is because the first time we did it, that like was a tremendous like feeling and experience. It was nothing like yeah. i expected it to be and we only gave away what was it three hundred dollars worth of in store credit at isaac's store yeah talk about it tell the yeah, people man, man. that that i don't know it's just like after we gave away that money and just seeing the response of the people and how good the videos and the channels were doing and how good everybody felt and all the crazy feedback it was just way bigger than i ever thought giving things away to people would be or feel like it it just completely blew past my expectations yeah so i figured going forward like how could, or everybody we do a podcast with going forward, what is like something we can give away? Like partner with them in some way. If we have a fitness guy on, how could we offer like a fitness service to somebody for free or anything like that going forward? And it's just, it's so cool. I love doing it. Yeah. And especially as like two podcasters, because like, you know, we both have a show, Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and like, it's, it's almost like it's a little different, but in, in such a good way, because like, we're both, mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're getting people to, to, you know, to subscribe basically to both of our shows yeah. and, then, and then like they have a chance to win. A PS5. freaking freaking PS5. Like, well, don't who sleep, else is though. doing that? Don't sleep because pretty soon it'll be a Tesla. Yeah, that's, that's right. We're trying pretty to get soon we'll be away a Tesla. Them keys. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, come yeah. get it. Uh, yeah. So I mean, yeah, I mean, we're we're we're, set, we're really setting the bar high yeah. for ourselves, yeah, you know, man. right off the bat with the PS5. But I'm cool with it. Yeah, because you have to keep like outdoing yourself always. You know, dude, that's been like that's been like the the show the like the theme of my show. Yeah. Like when this whole thing started. So, but you know, when, when we were on your show and I was telling you about like how people. You know, when before it was even a podcast and yeah. people um, would just come get their photo and I was just posting photos of people mm -hmm. coming. Right. Uh, I, I left one little part out uh, about like the leveling up thing. And, yeah. and and the one the one other detail was like people would bring props of like what, you know, that are related to their like life or business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like people would bring stuff, you know, like today we had microphones. We we're all podcasters. Right. Mm -hmm. So but, like other people would bring we always called them. They just got named props. Right. Like People would bring bring props. Yeah. And uh, I, f I forget who was the first to do it. It might have been my friend Denny Corby, but he's like an entertainer. He's a comedian, yeah. a comedian and a magician. Oh, that's cool. Mm. So like he came and he brought like a giant pair of scissors like this big. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he shows up with a giant pair of scissors oh, and wow. a couple other just like goofy yeah. things. And like I didn't ask him to bring them and he didn't tell me he was bringing it. <laughs> right. And he just brought it because that's just like that's his gig. Like, yeah. He's, yeah. you know what I mean? Like that's just, he, he does that normally. Right. Yeah. So he just brought them because he's a cool, funny guy. Mm. And uh, then once well, like, I posted those photos and be like, why does he have all that stuff? And then the next guy that came was like, next guy showed up with a bunch of stuff too. Mm -hmm. And the same thing. I don't even think, I don't even think I told him either. It was a chiropractor and he showed up with like a giant spine. Oh, oh my like God. Like a, you know what I mean? Like from like, you would get in like, in like a doctor's office. So like he started, he, <laughs> so like he showed up with a couple of things. And then it was like each person that would see the previous person, they'd yeah. have to one up the next guy or oh, girl. That's hilarious. Yeah. Right? So like you would see his I would see yours and like, I'm like, Oh, I got to do better than dairy. Yeah. Like, I got to bring more bigger stuff. And people yeah. start bringing bigger and bigger stuff. I, I've had live animals. I've, I've had goats. Oh my God. What Whoa. do you think when somebody just walks up to the OTS door with just a goat? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, that so, was like, it came, obviously it came, it, it came to the point that it became planned. It yeah. was just like, Hey, oh, okay. I would tell her like, Hey, like bring some props. Like, yeah. what can, you know, what can you bring? Like, you know, and people, but people already know, like people, like when they were already like, ready to come on the show they'd already seen hmm. like what other people were doing and bringing like they'd yeah. seen the previous people's content and um but yeah so like I, the, the goat wasn't a surprise you know <laughs> uh, but yeah i mean like you know like i've had i've had 
just monster large odd like things people are bringing in like just crazy That's but funny. but going back to like it literally was just like constantly leveling up so like we're going we're starting here at the ps5 yeah, yeah man and uh who knows where we'll go dug ourselves into a corner and now we did have to level up we did time. plus now we're talking about it so much that i feel like people are um people are gonna be expecting us to yeah, yeah. really to deliver yeah for sure but who knows maybe it'll go ps5 tesla hmm. house I don't know. Yeah, I yeah, just no, hope they'll always be in a position stuff. to do some shit like this because yeah. it's so amazing and it feels so, it's so good. cool. It's so fulfilling. Like I never, I never imagined it would feel like that. Just giving away something. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Right, so you guys, you guys are, you guys, you know, like we talked about, touched on a little before, but you guys are super young, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, what made you get into podcasting? I already know kind of part of the story, yeah, you mm-hmm. know, but like, you know, for people that are listening that may not know, like, how did you guys get started and why? Well, I would say like the idea of a like, well, the go-getters originally was my idea, but then it just came, I guess, into fruition. I had him, he was my first guest ever, Darian was. And uh, it just so happened to work that after that podcast and the situation and like the location, similar to what I was telling you yesterday, it just, it worked out perfectly bringing him in. But I guess it all really started for me when I, I fell in love with podcasts when I got out of school, my senior year, it was the COVID year. So my school year got cut in half. And honestly, didn't know what I was going to do with my future going forward. I wanted to play football my entire high school career. I know he was very similar, and that wasn't going to work out for me. And I was never a big college guy. Like, I knew I wasn't going to go to college if it wasn't for football. So I fell in love with listening to podcasts and just doing things on the side, like fitness. I was working out a lot. I was gaming a lot, as he was talking about. And during that time of life, it wasn't really anything going on. So I always had like an entrepreneurial mind or mindset and I always wanted to find another way. And since I love podcasting so much and I love, I'll say too, cause I don't even know if I really ever stress this to you, but I always wanted to entertain in some way, whether that be since a young age, I wanted to act. I started watching YouTube. I wanted to create YouTube content, like anything, gaming, making videos, anything. And then since my love for podcast, like listening to podcasts came into my life at such the right time. I just had to take it up and it felt like the right opportunity. Bought so a couple of microphones and just started doing it. The rest is history. I got, I got to add to that though. Yeah, do it. So Kevin and I were working together at a job that oh, I cannot yes. disclose. Yes. And talk about similar, it. Similar. We're both entrepreneurial. We both are always coming up with schemes to like run up some money or start some businesses or whatever. We all got different types of businesses throughout the past couple of years. And um, I remember he was like, kind of teeter-tottering on the whole podcast idea and that was his ticket like out of this job situation because we both worked at the same job and we're like damn i hate coming here man like (laughs) this sucks so bad and we just like that was our conversation for like those months yeah and then he continued to invest into some some equipment and i would like be in his ear like yo what if you did this and what if like you went this route and and, you know if only you did this it would blow up and this and that so we recorded one and like then i started like chip in a a lot more like on like what he had going on. And then I don't even know how it eventually came into the merge, but um, back in the day I had, um, I bought this house. I bought a house in March and the attic of the house is all finished. You've seen it. And I saw the, once I cleaned the attic room out, I was like, damn, that would be a really cool podcast studio before all of that. So then it just kind of merged together and yeah. we're doing a podcast. Just kind of, just kind of came, yeah. all came yeah. together. That's how it happens though, right? Like and it's it just, weird, yeah. Because yeah. like even going back to what you were saying before, like since day one, he and I were together and then working these jobs that we both hate. And mind you, neither of us are from the cloth that that's what we are going to be doing going forward. Like we just couldn't do it. We couldn't work that job. We couldn't like, I never worked a job that I felt passionate about, that I loved doing, I loved going to. And I know he was the same way. We worked at these jobs together. Mm-hmm. And it just so happened, like the conversations and over time, man, it, it just happened that way. But yeah. the universe has a weird way of doing that. Yeah, yeah. So talk about that for a minute. Like, you know, like, you know, you both, um, um, you know, talking about like n- college wasn't your thing. No. Right. And then like you worked some jobs that like you just like you couldn't find anything that yeah. you really loved. Yeah. Like talk yeah. about that for a minute because I think sure. that's such an interesting conversation. Um, I must say that there's probably an element of me having a bad attitude that that does exist. I get to there. But with the, the job, like with the I job. I can't see you in, having a bad attitude. In particular. Right. So. I'm never a kid that somebody would say, oh, he has such a bad attitude unless I'm at work. Yeah. And and doing something that you probably don't like, right? Yeah, and doing something That's the that, difference. Yeah, that doesn't fulfill me. But if I'm creating in some way, in any way, I'm that most happy-go-lucky kid on the world, in, yeah. on earth. But for some reason, um, just being at work and having to adhere to some superiority figure 
and show up on time and be away from the things that I actually wanted to be doing simply to pay my bills. It just didn't sit right in my head. Like yeah. I was, I always thought to myself, there gotta be something else. There has to be a different way. And with college, the only reason I was going to go to college was to play football in my mind, like leaving high school to play football. And then, you know, I went that route and it didn't end up working out. I tried college. And then when COVID came around, it was just like, nah, man, I'm not beat to be studying this. Like I got to go figure something out, out that I'm passionate about. I need to go create in a way that is aligned with my soul and it doesn't feel like this is it. And plus I was taking out loans and I was digging myself in debt. So I had to, I thought honestly it was the wisest thing to do. And, and like based on what is traditionally supposed to be done, like go to school, go to college, get a degree, get a good job. Like I wanted the complete opposite yeah. of that. You know, I wanted to create something that mattered to me. I wanted to create something that would be around after me, yeah. bigger than me, a legacy. I wanted to create a legacy. I didn't think I was going to do that just getting a degree and getting a cool job mm. and going through the motions of life and just working a nine to five. Yeah. That, like isn't, has nothing to do with you. you and know? working my way up like a corporate ladder, like having to rub elbows and you know, the kiss, nightmares. kiss ass yeah, that's no to fun. get a better position. Like, nah, man, let me create my own destiny. Let yeah. Me, let me, let me ride my own path. Yeah, it's so cool. Cause like literally almost like everything you said, like, I mean, granted I went to college, I graduated college, yeah. but like I, I a hundred percent agree with you. And like, yeah. I feel like, you know, it's, um, you know, if you're not, and, and kudos to you guys for, you know, just doing what you want to do and figuring that out yeah. while you're young, because like, it's smart. Like it, you, it's going to pay, it's going to pay dividends down the road for you guys that like, you have no idea, you know, because there's so many people that are like, you know, probably 40 years old yeah. that are, that hate their job, mm -hmm. but don't want to admit it. Yeah. You know, probably have yeah. too much debt mm. or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. And they just, you know, they just maybe just didn't, um, say like do what you guys did like you you just yeah. said nah screw it i'm just gonna i'm just gonna figure something else out and just find out what i really want to do yeah and i think like not a lot of people do that yeah like even today even today yeah. like, people don't do that they don't take the time mm -hmm. to just you know like you said like society i think puts the biggest pressure no doubt on us to follow a certain yeah. path mm -hmm. and like school does that to you too yeah it's you crazy know? to me because society is more accepting of the kid who goes to college and gets drunk every weekend and yeah. parties every weekend it's more accepting to that kid than to the kid who doesn't want to go that traditional route and wants to create his own path. Kevin and I have been together multiple times when an older fella asked us, what do you do? Where are you studying at? Oh man, I dropped out of school. Well, we need ditch diggers. Yeah, ditch diggers. That we, one, we that's need, a joke. It's a running know, joke for we us. We need this. Like I had people tell me I'm wasting my life. Like really? Or are you just blind? Like, are you just yeah. like ignorant to modern times? Yeah. And it's, and it's usually that, that those types of statements usually come from somebody that never took a risk. Yeah. yeah. And, and that, that casting just, judgment. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like they're projecting, right? Yeah. yeah. Because like, it's something that they couldn't do or that they were afraid of doing. And, and, and you know, it's, it's their insecurity. I yep. think, you know, yeah. passing on to passing no on doubt. to you. And this is the time to take the risk. hundred percent. Like, this is what I'm trying to swing for the home run, man. You got what do you, you got? Nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Nothing. Especially you guys at the time the, when we started. Like, yeah, you guys are in the best possible position. Yeah, literally, we're, we're healthy. Yeah. We got a bunch of time. We got a bunch of energy. You know, we're still passionate. We don't have any kids. We don't have any real rooted responsibilities. Like, let's get after it. Let's just yeah. try it. Let's just give it all we got. Yeah, you know? I love it. You guys Fuck like yeah. really are setting yourselves up for yeah major success and honestly you, you guys you guys are really doing the right thing <laughs> like back to the college thing like you know like like me like i went to college and like i went to penn state i love penn state you know yeah. like you know but at the same time you know it, it also i'm of also the mindset like certain you know if you go to college like certain certain jobs you, you need to go to college you yes, know, like a doctor absolutely. or like a lawyer yes. or like something technical yep you know what I mean? Like, yep. like some, some type of technical, something that you have to go to school for totally different. Mm. You know, I mean, I obviously didn't, I, I, I went to school for PR. It wasn't yeah. like, you know, anything that was like technical or mm. like I had to well, really look how have, you're using it now. Yeah. You're, you're luckily yeah. it you helped like a, you, but yeah, it helped you, you didn't but, need. Yeah. But like, I almost like didn't need it, but like, you know, but then there's the argument like, well, if I didn't go to school, would I even be here? Yeah. And I told you my crazy story yeah. with Jerry, Jerry yep. Rizzo, my buddy, mm -hmm. Jerry at Penn mm -hmm. state. And then like we connected and been in business and now in podcasting, like, but like, so you never know, like, you know, so like, I don't regret anything. You know what I mean? Like I don't, but yeah. like, at the same time, like I'm of the mindset, like you guys, like if that's not what you want to do, then don't do it. You know, I, like why, why do, why yeah. do something that somebody else is trying to convince you to do if you don't want to do it? Yeah. yeah. You know? Especially when we do that our whole lives and it never works out and it only digs you deeper in misery and just, you don't want to do it. Yeah. Like what's the point of waking yeah. up to just go work 
for eight hours doing something you don't yeah. want to do. And going back to the Darian statement, you said, um, what did you say about um, like you had like a bad attitude, right? Yes. Like I, 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 you know, like I said, like I almost don't believe that you had a bad attitude, but really the only reason you did is because you just didn't like what you were doing. Yeah, man. You yeah. know, and like I, I forget who else says it was probably Gary Vee or something. I saw a quote somewhere. Um, Nobody is lazy. You just don't love what you do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. For sure. It's man. so true. Mm. For sure. and, and it's kind of almost the same. It's almost the same statement that you made that like you had a bad attitude. Like nobody really has a bad attitude. You just don't love what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a fact. That's a fact. I think a, a misconception of this whole topic is if, if Kevin and I don't go to college, we must not value education when that's completely yeah. false. That's, that's a complete both work in education misconception. Kevin and I value value education to a T. Like I am very, very proactive on reading books, studying, learning my craft. Like this right here, what you, me, what all of us at this table do, we study this craft right here. I think people get confused with, are you smart? Are you intelligent? But like, what is your knowledge used for? Sometimes people have a bunch of shit stored in their head. And they don't do anything with and it's it. Not, yeah. It's not like specific enough. Like, yeah, you can answer some trivia questions, but like, bro, what are you doing with it? How are you utilizing your intellect? And so that's that's what really confuses me. Like, if you're gonna if you're gonna prioritize education, education is important. I believe education is liberation. Education can free you from whatever shit that you have going on. Yeah, absolutely. But it's how you utilize yeah, it. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so. and go, like and even going back to that, like I was never a book smart kid. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was the kid like I hated high school. Mm. I liked college probably because I, well I did better in college. I had more freedom and flexibility, and I was able to do things and go take classes I actually yeah. liked. Right, mm -hmm. um, but like you know you just you you, you just you, you flock to what you like. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, and like then the, you know and and but back to like the book thing, like you could be the biggest book smart person in the world. But then when it comes to the real world, yeah, like them, what, you know what I mean? And, and, and I, I often found just looking back on people that, you know, that I know, like all the book smart people, not that they aren't doing well, mm -hmm. but like the book smart people tend to not do well in the real world yeah. compared to somebody who's got the street smarts, the, yeah. you know, the entrepreneur, yeah. go getters, yeah, no you doubt. know, the go getters <laughs> mindset, right? Boom. Seriously. Yeah. Boom. It's two completely different fields that you're yeah. operating in. Yeah. 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 Because like, you know, anybody anybody can study and memorize something for a test yeah for the most part yeah yeah you know like almost anybody can do that and anybody can just know what the answer is going to be on that test because you you prepared for it yeah and you studied and you knew the answer ahead of time but yeah that, but that that doesn't work in the real life world life is different like life you get the lesson and you're given the test yeah or i'm sorry in the traditional schooling system you get the lesson you're given the test in life you're given the test and you learn the lesson. That's mm. right. It's completely backwards. You're, you're tested every right? day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So. With no lesson. Yeah. Right. So you have to, it's, it's backwards. Like you said, it's backwards. Yeah. I think like, are you, are you really truly intelligent if you can't get what you want from life? Did I say that right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, absolutely. Like, are you truly an intellectual person if you cannot get what you want out of life? Like or applying this intelligence to the real yes, world and like, ways in which it applies to your life. Like, how are you so, how are you so intelligent, but you can't figure out why you're miserable? Mm. How are you so intelligent, but you can't figure out all this shit that you got in your, in your life that you complain about? You're not taking any real action yeah. on. Like, I, f I think a really intelligent person could utilize their intelligence and create what they want out of this life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Create so, their own life. Yeah. They can create their own mm. way, man. Like they can set up, you know ways to express themselves they can set up circles of people that they like to be around they love to be around they can build a beautiful family they can go on trips you know every so often they can admit to themselves that maybe i don't like this job so damn much and let me figure something else out you know that to me is raw intelligence that to me is like you can go out and figure it out yeah you know and just trying things man that's like yeah the so biggest important. thing like just trying like just starting something yeah you know I, like i know I know we're all of the same mindset like of this because like, you know, like you just started the podcast, like yeah. when you started, like you just did it, you, just you know, post, you just gotta do it. Yeah. You just got to do it. And everybody, I, I probably said this a million times, like on, on other episodes of, of my show here, but like, you just got to start yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, and, and stop worrying about what other people think mm -hmm. and like, just do it Yeah, because you never, you never yeah. know if you're even going to like it. Like you might've started the podcast and then hated it. Yeah. Even though like, you're like, I kind of want to get into this, yeah, you know, man. like you don't know until, mm -hmm. until you actually do it. 
it's yeah. so weird that that's always what it turns into is like even me because i was the person like oh no nah, like we gotta make this perfect first we gotta make this perfect like we can't post this episode until this is ready and now i'm from the cloth that i'm literally like just posted like let's just do it no matter what we're gonna have episode live thursday i don't care what goes wrong yeah we'll have it out dude i know and, and, <laughs> and that's that's what that's what it takes to make it yeah. like in anything not yeah. just podcasting mm-hmm. but like literally in anything and i was i'm of the same same mindset like yeah no matter what, you know, I would only take like, like weeks off. Like if I was like going on vacation yeah. or something or like around Christmas, I might take a week off or like Thanksgiving, like whatever, like certain times like that. It's mm-hmm. healthy though. Like yeah. You, at some point you have, luckily we've been doing it for such a short amount of time. Like I haven't felt like that once yet, but I'm sure it gets like that for everybody. You yeah. need breaks. You yeah. need to yeah. focus on other things yeah. and you have a family. Like it makes perfect sense to me yeah. that that'd be the route but, to say. Yeah. But otherwise, like you said, like you just put it out no matter yeah. what. And that's how I like even, you know. Not every episode was a rock star episode on yeah. my part or the guest part, or, you know, everything just like, but we did it and we just put it out and like, no one's going to remember, like no yeah. one's going to remember like how, <laughs> ba- how bad, you know, uh, episode X was like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, like literally no one's going to remember or care mm. because yeah. like a lot of times I feel like the other crazy part is like people only really see you for where you're at, like right yeah. now, mm. you know what I mean? Like, and, and for me, like even me, like I know you guys have seen the old pictures of my studio and stuff and like, yeah. like way back like OG like episode one two three like before I had anything wasn't in this place like yeah. nothing but like you know like when people meet me now like they never saw that beginning yeah yeah you know and sometimes I feel like people um not that I care about what other people think but like people I think will sometimes like look at me and not realize but won't even know where it came from yeah you know what I mean like I don't think you guys ever knew or saw those original pictures right of like my old like how like the you know what I mean? Like until not until it, that thing you shared the other yeah. day, and I was like really mm-hmm. watching it and seeing. Right? It, but like that's what nobody gets to see that, but you. Yeah, and it's like, and people forget that stuff yeah. sometimes too. Like, and like when you when you start to like have success, if you want to call this success, yeah. right? Um, people people really, you know, new people come into your life, mm. and like they may only know you or see you for the success that you're yeah. currently having, but nobody saw. Right. Nobody saw what you did for the mm. last three years. Yeah, right. And what it took. Hmm. You know. Like even you, like even you guys, like I mean, like you know, you put out enough episodes that like, I I don't even know what your first one looks like. I've 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 watched a handful of your episodes. You know what I mean? But like I, I don't even know. It's mm-hmm. rough. You know what I mean? It's so like <laughs> I you know. <laughs> yeah, those but, are rough episodes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, they all are, dude. Yeah. So my first ones, dude, rough as hell, yeah. <laughs> super rough. But like you just do it, you know. And I and I gotta you know give a shout out to my 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 big sponsor, Blue Door Financial. They were they were my first guests yeah. on the show. Really? Oh wow. Yeah, cool. it's kind of funny, right? It's kind of crazy. Um, wow. Chris, and, Chris and Steve Vanesco, bro- brothers, yeah, and uh, co-owners of of the of the financial place that they have, and but yeah, they were they were like I always tell you like they were like the brave first guests. Yeah. I think I even said those words in the episode. Like these are my first two brave, <laughs> brave enough people to come on the show. Yeah, and you know it's people like that that um, you know same thing. Like they're just like who cares? Like we're here. Let's do it. Yeah. like let's just do it. Mm-hmm. And not even worry about like oh how is it gonna is it gonna be perfect like yeah. nothing like it's just like yeah whatever just tell us when to be there and we'll show up mm-hmm. and you Boom. just go it is. Boom. that's why luckily Here for us are. it was just he Here and we i we were able to just record it and just it didn't matter what anybody think we were just gonna put it out there yeah first like time we recorded was just me him and two of our closest friends jake and brian shout out and those are just off the rail like i was telling you yesterday those episodes might get us in trouble like <laughs> those Fuck. are something like and I, I definitely hope like we get to a position where we could release something like that one day because that just that speaks louder than words like that's where we were when we were recording podcasts in fear of putting them out like f- nobody got to see us or hear anything yeah. from us yet that's when we were terrified of what everybody had to think and what our families had to think and that yeah, was like, what, like, what, like what were you afraid of like honestly Wait, during those days or like, before like, no, like, you... like when you first like, OK, you put, you put out your first episode, but like, well, OK, let's say you, you, you thought about it and you guys are like, all right, we're going to start recording episodes. Yeah. But then you're like, ah, we're not even going to release these like these suck, whatever. Um, like you said, you were afraid, like what your family's going to think, what yeah. maybe other friends would think. That's like, honestly what it was for me more than like other people, because our friends were super supportive. Like our friends think it's some of the coolest shit in the world. But like, honestly, I was scared to let my family down and my family is more supportive than anybody now. So. I definitely was wrong about that. But I don't know where that belief stems from, though, that, like, you're going to be worried about what people think. Like, why is that deeply rooted within all of us? Like, why is that just a thing that happens? I have a theory. And I think this theory isn't just mine. I know it's not just mine because I've adopted this theory from other theories. But I think it's because of our, like, tribal nature. Mm. Like, we're meant to survive in tribes. And so if we go against the grain, we might be condemned in a way. We might be 
guess yeah, you so don't. Like, like like you like he said like Kevin said like you might be letting your tribe yes. down. Like you might be you yeah. might be letting your family down. Yeah. yeah. And and in, in that case in that case like if you were alone that means you were to die. Yeah. You know. And at that time, it's like a survival life, thing, maybe. That's like when I was holding on to a lot of that like self-conscious bullshit, where I was like, just scared of what other people thought about me. But that was at a completely different time of life for me. Like I've evolved so much since high school, and like those days where I felt that way, and I just I don't understand what it is within people that causes us to feel or believe those kinds of things because it's not true. Once you put it out, you just realize that most people are gonna like you, or most people just aren't gonna watch, and they don't really care. We haven't really gotten much hate. Yeah, so right, and they're like, not watching anyways. Who, who cares? Yeah, you know? it is what it is. And honestly, if you hate us and you're watching us, thanks for the view. We yeah. appreciate it. Shout out to all the haters. <laughs> yeah, shout out. Keep pumping those numbers, baby. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Right. Yeah, yeah. No the, hater, the haters are important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you gotta know? show love to them. Yeah, for sure. No gotta doubt. keep them close. Yeah. Got to. You know, like you were saying yesterday, it's like those your haters are some of your biggest fans sometimes. They are. Like, because they're always really? they're actually always watching they're always yeah. watching. always every watching. post and <laughs> even if they're not dropping them likes nah, they see everything yeah, that well, they you're sure doing. do oh yeah yeah they sure do them giveaways yeah. make them steam too like <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. PS5. you know they're making because, a fake gmail and <laughs> yeah yeah they they're probably are, under, yeah, under, under john under john smith <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm, yeah also dingleberg <laughs> yeah, some funny shit i'm gonna get those go getters yeah <laughs> Yeah, type shit. that's yeah. really what it is, though. So funny. It's got to roll with it. Just yeah. post it. Like, seriously, just post it. Whatever you're sitting on in your TikTok yes. or your YouTube or your podcast or your music, just drop it. Seriously, just drop it. That's Don't care what the world thinks about it. Seriously. That's the best advice, man. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I it's so true, though. And I would like literally take it from me. Like the person that believed the same way you guys believe right now is not the case. It's really not. Yeah. And just I think I post it. And I think like when I was on your show wasn't we didn't say it on the show but i think you were telling me afterwards like you were always like the the shy kid yeah and like you weren't like you weren't like you are now yeah right but obviously i never knew you then mm. and but you were you were probably somebody who would never get on a mic and right like you, you were really. shy you didn't want to i was very similar to how you described yourself like i i fit in with a lot of people but i never really associated myself too closely with anybody besides like the same three four people i associate myself with now it, yeah, it's it's interesting, but yeah, that's just it's always been me. And then I had to shake that over time because I've always wanted to, like I was telling you earlier, I've always wanted to entertain, but those are two hard things to balance, like being shy and being anxious and having like whatever over here, and then at the same time wanting to like explode and do all these crazy things and talk to a bunch of different people and stake my name out there. It's, those are two completely hard things to balance when you believe in them both. Totally. So yeah. it was a hard balance for me for sure. Absolutely. Boom. Boom. Well, you got over it quick, man. Oh yeah, good for you because I'm, like well, literally, some people like will probably never get to that point in their yeah, whole life. Like, right. how crazy is that? Mm. It is. How crazy is it that? Is. Every episode though, it's it's new. It comes back. You sit down, you get that rush of anxiety. But it, I tell him all the time, my anxiety is different. It's like I put stuff off until literally the moment of. Like, if I know we have a crazy podcast guest coming, I won't be thinking about it. I won't be worried about it at all until I'm literally sitting down, and that's when it hits. Doing me. the like, same Whoa, way. Like, yeah. what is going on? Like, yeah, this yeah. really was about to happen. Yep. So I still carry it. It's not like it's gone, but I've managed it a lot better now. For sure. I think um I think that is the currency for for growth and success. You have to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. always. You yeah. have to deal with that. You have to go towards your fear in some way. Otherwise, you stay stagnant. You plateau. Yeah. yeah. You know. Totally. Mm -hmm. Like even me, like as cra crazy as as this is to admit. I I know I think I told you guys this before, but I was like so hesitant to start video for the show yeah because like i was like oh i can't be on camera mm -hmm. right we well, are the same way like i was like you know i did i did 99 episodes yeah. 99 mm. for two years for two straight mm -hmm. years i put out episodes and jimmy t martin shout out to jimmy he's like dude you gotta start video mm -hmm. he's like it's the only way you're gonna grow yeah. and i'm like i know he's like well what are you waiting for and i was just mm -hmm. like ah oh. i don't know. I just kept coming up with excuses yeah mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yeah okay the money's one thing yeah, so what? You open a credit card, mm -hmm. paid off. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a big deal, right? But like, I kind of like used like that as an excuse. Like, even though I had the money, but mm -hmm. like, I was just like, man, I just don't want to spend the money. It's like, yeah. whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I was coming up with like every excuse to do it. But it's like now looking back on it, I wish I would have started it. Yeah. Two years ago. How yeah. early on, like, what episode do you think like you started thinking like, man, I gotta get this on video? And how long you think oh, you really man. put it off for? I probably put it off for like a good. A good six months or more really? and i wow. mean that's six months i mean that's like 30 probably dang. 25 to 30 episodes wow dang yeah for us it was only like the first what like 11 like our first 11 had no video but the entire like 
our intention from the start was to have a video. We just didn't understand it enough back then to make it happen that way. And we <laughs> didn't have the funds or the means to get a camera at the time and even make it happen. But then we figured it out. We got it working. We tried on iPhones, like, funnily enough, at the start. We were trying to record, like, fucking two-hour <laughs> podcasts on an iPhone. It did not work. Did My work? shit was ready to explode. Now it did work. Yeah, phone calls. Right. Lit on fire. My oh, job was yeah. smoking by the end of the podcast. That's oh, hilarious. Yeah. Then we tried, uh, we had to, we were trying to borrow friends' cameras. Yeah. The battery was, would die. And we'd have to take, like, 20-minute breaks to charge the battery up, mm. set it back up, try to, it Damn. just was a mess. And then a struggle. Disaster, yeah. yeah. So it's a trial and error thing. You got to try, fail, try, fail, try, fail. And that's how innovation happens. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, you it's how you it systemize out. things too. It's how you find out what works. And now like we know what to do going forward. Yeah. And it's it's yeah. literally it's like, that's part of the journey. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt. We'll never forget those like kinds of things. Like all those, all those crappy failures, the, the mm-hmm. battery's dying, the camera's not working. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's like, that's just like what happens. We're still there, man. Our mm-hmm. freaking, our, our camera quality is like orange right now. Yeah. But we'll figure but it that's out. That's what we were talking <laughs> to you about. Like a bunch of Oompa Loompas. Yeah. But that's why I love those uh, Corporate Nightmares episodes we dropped so much because our first Corporate Nightmares episode ever was like episode five or six. And we were literally talking about that. Like, yeah, guys, like we're going to try to get the camera working for these next couple of episodes. Like, we're going to try to get this working, that working. We just were putting it all off. Like, we weren't doing any of it. And we finally just clicked. Like, that's why I'm so happy to get to go back and watch those in the future because you'll literally see, like, that's when we were at when we were bullshitting about getting a camera, we really didn't have a camera then. We didn't know what the fuck we were doing. And then we finally figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> so in order, you'll always get to see like where we were at at that point in time and yep. how we made it work. See the progress. Yeah. 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 For sure. I love it. So what else, what else are you guys into? Like, um, I, I wear a lot of hats, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like a lot of different stuff for sure. Yeah. Like I love podcasting, but po- this is what I like to think about. And I want to ask you this question as well. Okay. So let's stay on this. Go ahead. So I asked this to a bunch of people when we do podcasts, if your mind, right, was like a pie chart, mm. what would be, or a portfolio, what would be the percentages of each one of your slices of that chart? You know what I mean? Like yeah. what consumes the most? Yours might be family and podcasting and then, you know, whatever else. But I feel like mine is all over the place. Mm. So I like, uh, man, where do I start with this? Obviously, I love podcasting. I got to be like over 50%. <laughs> then I really like reading i like to learn like i like books on all types of stuff i like books on psychology business uh human nature history all that stuff i love to read and to enhance my knowledge i like real estate i just bought a house i just bought my first property so hopefully i can begin to build a a real estate portfolio in the future that'd be dope and creating wealth like i'm into like that type of stuff investing and building wealth for Mm -hmm. myself that's really cool uh, I love martial arts. I just got my blue belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Uh, Congrats, bro. Uh, this weekend. Congrats. Check it out. That's cool. Thank you very much. Uh, martial arts are cool. I like to do kickboxing and jiu-jitsu. Um, what else do I like? What else am I into? You basically hit everything I was going to say on the head except for like fitness in general. Fitness, gaming, yeah. Those kinds fitness. of things. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. You go. I mean, serious. I mean, basically everything you said. Besides, I'm trying to get into the martial arts. I know. Yeah, we gotta get him into MMA. <laughs> very long, and it's something I'm very interested in doing. That's just, I mean, out of all the things he said, that's the only thing that he said that I'm very interested in that I haven't actually took initiative in trying to do yet. I also don't own any property, so he got he has me beat there as well. We'll get. We'll You'll get, get there. Yeah, You'll I'm get trying. There. I'm trying. I'm trying to build yeah. it. But yeah, I mean, seriously, all those things. But definitely fitness. I love entertaining. Like I told you before, I love doing podcasts and just thinking about like this business in general. It really takes up like the majority of my day every day is just thinking about ways to improve this or editing or scheduling or what we're doing here, what we're doing there, who we're meeting with on this day. Like my mind and time sheet is just so cluttered right now with all these business related things, but I wouldn't ask for it any other way. Yeah. I love it. I agree. I'm kind of like in the same boat almost with just about everything. What does your pie chart look like? Yeah. It's, um, it's obviously podcasting. It's Mm -hmm. family, real estate. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, now I got this building. Yes, sir. You know, and uh, this is my first investment property. Oh, yes, yeah. sir. You know, um, you know, I, I have other interests in things that like I don't do anymore. You yeah. know, like I mean, I still, I'm still like, a, like a, as you guys know, I did martial arts. I did karate for yeah, ten years. Yes, sir. Did we bring that up yesterday. On, on I don't think. I don't, I, I don't I, think we I did. Thought I, th- I thought I do. I hopped we in. My, I hopped to. in. I hopped in my car, and I'm like. Oh man, like I, I, we've, we've not that we were planning to talk about that, but I was like, I, I don't was. know why it popped up in my head. No, we were. Right. Like, we wanted to ask you about that, like discipline, like training arts and stuff. Yeah. Cause I didn't, I had no idea until you just told us that the other day that you did. Karate okay. And you became yeah. a black belt. That's very cool. Yeah. Thanks man. Yeah. It's a lesser known thing about me nowadays. Cause like, I mean, I, I basically stopped really when mm-hmm. I was 18, mm-hmm. you know, so it was a long time ago, you know, I'm 33 and, uh, but like I still, 
Not that I'm not as fast or as strong or as, you know. Don't let them lie to you. He's throwing head kicks at anybody. At anybody that tries to run down in the OTS studio, Bill's throwing a flying head kick. That's right. (laughs) I'll I'll knock those headphones right off your head. (laughs) I can stop like an inch before your face. I got a question. Do you ever walk around the house and like throw combos and shit? Sometimes. Yeah. Think about like it. Throw kicks at your wife and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I should. I should. Yeah. Like I should. That's when you go yeah. home. Yeah. Surprise with a low yeah. calf. Yeah. yeah. But stuff like that. Like you know, like yeah. you know, like martial arts. Obviously, like yeah, you know, maybe one day I'll get back into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like you know, uh, there's things that like I'm I'm interested in mm-hmm. that like even though I don't do them, like I'm still like interested in those things. Yeah. You know, like obviously, because martial arts is a huge part of my life. Mm-hmm. A huge part of my life. Yeah. Uh, you want to hear a real crazy, embarrassing story? Absolutely. Yes. You're gonna die. Yes. I told this story on one other podcast and on one other episode a long time ago. Episode fifty, it was actually episode fifty-five, and the reason I remember it is because it was my it was with my buddy Jimmy Martin, mm. okay, Jimmy T. Martin, who his grandfather was was the karate school I first went to. Yeah. Okay. So Jimmy Martin also did martial arts, uh, did a little bit of karate, and then he ends up he was a D one wrestler, mm. um, and was more wrestling. And then forgive me, Jimmy, but I think he did um I think he did jujitsu a little bit mm. like in col- in college okay. and after college. Um, but, um, this is my super embarrassing story and, um, but it, uh, it just, it proves that like, I never quit. Like, and I, I never give up. Right. So, um, there was a, there's a sign, there's a sign on the wall and I've told this story a couple of times recently on a couple of episodes of mine and on another episode of another podcast I think I was on. Um, but the quote said, winners never quit. Quitters never win. Mm-hmm. And like when I started, I was super young. Like yeah. I was, I was only like eight years old. Right. This is, this isn't the embarrassing <laughs> part, by the way. Um, but the embarrassing part was like, <laughs> you're going to die. Um, like one day, like, uh, you know, moving around, like I had to piss so bad. Yeah. I had to piss so bad, you know, bouncing oh, around boy. fighting. You know where this is going. <laughs> yeah, okay. of course. Going. Uh-oh. Oh yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Piss, piss my pants in class. <laughs> yeah. And listen, like, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I don't care. Can't super, be. super embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But like, but like, you know, at that point, you know, looking back on it now, like I could have just quit. I could have just, I was so embarrassed. Yeah. Right. Like I could have just went home and told my mom and dad, like, I'm, I can't go back there. Yeah. yeah. Like I can't go back there. Like this, this is so embarrassing. Like so embarrassing. But I was like, I, I didn't and I didn't yeah. quit. You know what I mean? It's like moments like that in your life, even yeah. though I was super young, it's like moments like that in your life that you keep going yeah. and you keep you going back. And the fact that I can talk about it now, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's free. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. It's the, the you know what I mean? Has you in a hold? How, how'd you piss your pants? Why'd you piss your pants? Because I had to piss so bad, and we couldn't. I couldn't leave the. I couldn't leave the class. <laughs> oh, okay. We're, so I mean, I probably could have, but like it was. You know, it was a strict school. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was. It was nearing the very end. This is yeah. why. This is why it happened. Okay. It was nearing the very end, and I was. I was helping with a sparring match. Mm-hmm. I was like, like I wasn't like a judge, but like at some points, like I was like judging. But like, I. I was. I was on the edges of the of the um you know wasn't a, I'm not, it's not like a ring because it's it's invisible it's invisible ring yeah. for anyone you know you guys probably know but yeah there was but like if if somebody kind of went out of the bounds you're gonna fall into a bunch of trophies and get all banged up yeah. right so mm-hmm. there were certain people that had to like me like stand at a certain angle a certain mm-hmm. spot to make sure no one was mm-hmm. you know going and falling and you know getting injured out of yeah. bounds right mm-hmm. so yeah it was nearing the end of class and i had to i had to piss so <laughs> i had to piss so bad and I'm, ba- I'm bouncing around. And the more you move around, the more you got to go. Yeah. And I just literally, I was like eight years old, like oh, nine okay. years old. Just couldn't hold it anymore. A young Bill. You yeah, never, young You've never seen yeah. somebody get heel hooked on the pissing themselves <laughs> before? you never seen that? Yeah. No, I can't say I have. That's interesting. Yeah, so like I didn't get like hit and pissed myself yeah. or like, you know, no one, like nothing like that. It was, just, it was literally just like, yeah. I wasn't like in the, yeah. in the sparring match. I was like kind of helping with the match. And mm-hmm. I was like, I couldn't really step away from yeah. it. Like in the middle of the match, yeah. I couldn't just walk away. You get in big trouble. Mm. Yeah. Like I could, I literally, I, I probably couldn't at the moment until like maybe in between matches. But then yeah. I kept telling myself, like, ah, I'll just, I'll just make it. Like I'll just wait. Like I'll, mm-hmm. I'll go like class is almost over. Yeah. You know, I'll make it. I'll make it. I kept telling myself. And then I, I, yeah. Nine and nine and ten people probably would have never went back to that karate class, either. right? So that's true. Right. That kind of speaks yeah. true to a lot of the shit that, that we're true. talking about, like how wild that is. Exactly. It's so it's so wild. Like literally, almost anyone else probably would have quit. Oh yeah, yeah. Almost anyone yeah. else probably wouldn't quit. My ass probably would have fucking quit if I peed in karate. That <laughs> yeah. yeah. I broke my arm though. That's why I had to quit karate. I was on my way to that black belt. I got. Yeah. What's the belt after yellow? The third belt I guess you it get. Depends on the school. Mine was green. Green. I, it might have been green. Yeah. It was whatever. It, my school. It was like white, yellow, and then there was a third one. Whatever the third one was. That's okay. What I had. And I had to quit. And I broke my arm. And that's when I took up football. 
So it worked out for me in well, that Well, she did something else and didn't just not do anything. Yeah. 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 For sure. But yeah, so but like back to like martial arts, like it's so, you know, like you said, you wanted to talk about when we were on your show and we didn't. But yeah, I mean, like the, like the determination, like they said that that sign, winners never quit, quitters never win. Yeah. yeah. Like it's, you know, it's not about winning. It's just about not quitting. Yeah. Mm. And like that stuck in my mind forever. Like it's still, I literally think about it like probably almost every day. Yeah. yeah it's that sign. For sure. It's like you a know? woman. Yeah. And yeah. it's like you live by that, and and part of me pissing my pants. I think it's part of that. It's part yeah. of that story. Yeah, I, I get how you know? you'll remember that, that shit forever. Yeah, and everyone else will now too, because I've told it. I think this is probably the second or third time on my show. Nice. Yeah. Sometimes you just help drain the main vein. You know hey, what I'm whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Let's drop the it's, nuggets. It's, it's cool to pee your pants, right? Yeah. yeah sometimes. Yeah. Every, yeah, yeah. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's doing it. You know. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. Yeah. 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 So. Oh, man. But yeah, the martial arts thing. It's like. Yeah, know. martial arts is cool, man. I love it. I yeah. love like uh, how humbling it is. And um, it's funny because a lot of times like men think they're much more capable in a combat setting than they actually are. Absolutely. Me including. <laughs> and so when I hopped into jujitsu gym, I was like, yeah, I'm the man. I'm a big dog, I'm, you know, <laughs> a football player <laughs> yeah. or whatever. And it didn't work out that way. Shout out Coach James Delaney. He was episode uh, 11. 11, our first video yeah. podcast. And uh, he said, this is what James said. And he talked about this on our podcast, but it's not true. Um, he said that I was bullying kids during live roles and what I was really just doing was wrestling. I was like shooting double legs and like, yeah. you know, trying to take people down. So he was like, Oh, this kid's being a bully. And so he was like, all right, you're rolling with me. And when him and I rolled, he threw like a hip toss on me and I was like upside down for like three seconds in the ceiling and I hit the ground. I was like, yeah, damn. I, Happens. Guess, I guess I'm not as bad as I thought I was. And then, you know, but I kept showing up and here we are. It's the name of the game. It's the name of the game. Keep what showing up. Yeah, keep showing up. What do they call that white belt shit? What um, did he call it? Did spazzy white belt. Oh, a spazzy white belt. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. It's like erosion, though. You ever see like those, I think we talked about this on yesterday's podcast. You ever see like like a drop of water like hits a rock? Yeah. It just keeps on hitting the rock. Yeah. It keeps on hitting the rock. And there'll be like diagrams, like five years, 10 years, 15, 50 years, and like what it can do to that rock over time. It's just consistency. Oh, my bad. It's just, okay. it's just consistency. If you just keep on keep on going anything have anything can happen you'll wear that rock away you'll wear, wear it away <laughs> yeah you'll, you'll beat that rock down eventually that's right and eventually that rock will say all right you got it man you, you got you, it you win the, the universe will step aside and let you reap your rewards yeah for sure yeah yes sir ski boom go getters but back but back to real estate real quick and i had to bring up make sure i get the right episode numbers um, I had a couple, couple cool, really good uh, local real estate guys on my show. If yeah. you want to like learn from them and hear what they did, uh, a guy by the name of Josh Axe. Okay. Uh, Axe as in you know, you know, an actual axe, right? Yeah. yeah cool. What a cool last name, right? No. What a, that's really his last name. At first, before I met him, I, I actually asked him, like, dude, is that seriously your last name, Axe? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, no, it's not. That's <laughs> I was like, no, really. I'm like, what's your real last name, Axe? Hmm, uh, wow. But yeah, it really is. It, yeah, it's his last name. But episode ninety three. Josh Axe. I'll check okay. it out. Yeah, check it out. And then one other one was uh, my buddy Alan Klein, episode 71. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's also uh, he also real estate investor. Both of them are real estate investors. Alan Klein is also, he's a real estate agent, sells by day, and also does real estate investing on the side. Oh, wow. Um, nice. So he's really, they're both really in the game. Yeah. Big, big, I mean, big time. Big time. Like, they don't just have a few properties. Big time. That's nice. Um, You know, so, uh, but yeah, if you want to, like, check check out a couple guys that did it locally. Fuck yeah. Um. Josh be. is doing stuff like out of town too, but mm. I mean, yeah, yeah, they're cool guys to like learn from. Yeah, I wonder if he was a lumberjack in his past life. That's what I was, had to I was just gonna say, or maybe like a like a like a Viking or some shit. Oh man, had yeah, to it's, it's ah! definitely from the it's fucking yeah. Viking descent. Yeah, had, had to have been with that, name, right? <laughs> That's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Work in the lumber field or some shit. At some yeah. point in your life, you got to. Yeah, and then my buddy, so my buddy Alan, Alan Klein, he was a, uh, my real estate agent that helped me get this property. Yeah, right. Oh, but nice. um, crazy, crazy crazy part is is like he was so when i grew up remember i told you i grew up on down on melrose ave yeah down near only a few blocks from from where you live mm-hmm. and uh, i won't give away like your address or street name so don't <laughs> worry but i <laughs> but um but no uh, my, my buddy alan um lived right uh, up around the corner too like he lived on old river road oh wow. so like when i when i left your place and like i turned on old river road yeah. when i was leaving i was like i turned and then i see his house like he doesn't live there anymore and his parents moved out of there like they live somewhere else now yeah but uh when i left your when I left your house after the doing the doing the podcast with you guys, I turned the corner and there's Alan's house. And I used to ride my bike from Melrose Ave, oh, you know, man. down and then onto yeah. you know onto uh, Old River Road, like um, you know down the road there. And um, yeah, and I was like, I it's just crazy. Like I used to ri- I used to ride my bike there all the time. And so yeah. as soon as I left, I'm like, man, this is like 
by trip, the past. trip down memory lane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yes, That's sir. one dope thing about our city. Like that, just that little small section of our city. I feel like there's a lot of history there. Like for us, especially like we've done, we've lived our whole lives in that like little town, but it seems like a lot of people we run into that are familiar with that area have some kind of story relating to that little general area. I think it's pretty cool because we have a lot of stories from that area as well. Yeah, sure. Crazy. I used to ri- I used to ride my bike over in like the Mart's bus parking lot turnaround. Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah. Basically, almost get hit by a bus every day yeah. As, yeah. A, as a kid. You know, yeah, F- fun times. Kids at our school would do like fucking like what do you call it? like drift? They would like drift in that parking lot after school. We would drive down that street on Melrose. Fucking no, drift out like of the Mart's bus parking lot onto oh. like that little connected. Oh, oh what, yeah, is that Melrose? Like, like on Melrose, like yeah. where they have that parking yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I I literally, I literally used to live, I lived right across the from that parking lot. Really, that's cool. Man. Like I I like my my house overlooked that one parking lot. Oh wow, that's I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that's yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah, right. Yeah. Isn't that wild? It mm-hmm. is crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a small world. Yeah. So yeah, I used to used to ride my bike down there all the time. Grew up with Alan. Like Alan and I went to school basically like since like we were like five. You know, where'd you go to middle school? Oh, you went to that. So I, yeah, I went, yeah, I went to Catholic school, right. St. Al's. And then, yeah. and then after, then we moved from Wilkes-Barre to Hanover. So then I switched schools from, uh, St. Al's Catholic school to, yep. to, uh, to Hanover in seventh grade. And, you know, Alan ended up doing the same thing. I think he might've came like a year or so after me, but, mm. um, but yeah, crazy. You'll have to check him out. See yeah. What he's all about. Cool dude. Yeah. He's a, he's a real cool, estate. Yeah. Yeah. They, it's they, a cool they game. taught me a lot. Do you have any, like, do you have any goals for, uh, like what you want to do in real estate? Do you want to create like a like a like a portfolio? Do you want to continue oh, to invest yeah. in more? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm already I'm already on the hunt for the next yeah. one. Yeah, no. yeah, That's yeah, cool. yeah, absolutely. I'm telling you, like once you once you get like your first, like I know you like you own you own real estate, but it's like your house, right? So it's yeah. not really like an investment property per se. Um, you know, unless you like end up moving out and renting it or something. That's but, definitely the plan for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but like as of right now, it's like your primary residence, yep. you know. But like mm-hmm. a, but like once you get once you get that property, like once you get that first investment, it's like, that's it. You go down the rabbit hole. It's like, you get the real estate bug and it just keeps going. Ah, the real just estate keep, bug. Yeah, you get the real estate you bug. You just keep up, up. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. You just keep upgrading the studio and just keep uh, getting rid that's of it. Just renting them out, selling them. Yeah. yeah. I'll just keep buying new studios. Yeah. yeah I'll bro. just keep moving to a new one, make it a uh, bigger one. Yeah. And then I'll keep, then I'll just, you know, that's rent the goal. Out, make it do whatever the hell they want with it. You know, that's the goal. Like how cool would it be to get like a big ass warehouse? Oh, I w- where you can have everything. Like yeah. you can have like a gym in there. You can have, that's oh, totally. That's yeah, like, ideal. I would love to get a big giant, like commercial, like yeah. industrial yeah. warehouse. Like that's like an ideal, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it'll happen for sure, man. Imagine oh yeah. That. I love that. Yeah, I like love your, that. Look, I love the, like your the sauna, your deprivation oh, yeah. tank. Yeah. Is- All zen out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. In the morning. <laughs> that peace. Then you yeah. get to work, like you said. The like that's I wanted to own something like that my whole life, so I hope I get to ded- like dedicate a whole portion of my life to like learning a lot about that and figuring it out in a way that makes sense to me and in a way that I can be effective with it going forward. I would love to own a bunch of different properties one day. Yeah, yeah. What was that one TV show called with Rob Robin Big? Oh yeah, remember that show? And they had yeah, I used to watch that like factory and there was like a big skate yeah. park and like basketball yeah. courts and offices and stuff. I'm like ready that. for it. Yeah, man, that gotta be I'm it. Ready for, I'm ready for it. <laughs> that, that has to yeah. be it. Let's find us a warehouse. Yeah. I'm I've always had it. a dream of like buying one of those and doing something very similar to that, and then having it as like a hub for everybody that like for all creative minds yeah. to like come to and like yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Like collaborate, bounce ideas. Yeah, off one totally. Another, but like literally like a fun warehouse, like literally just a crazy ass warehouse where we all put hella work in. Yeah, like that's kind of like I mean this isn't like a warehouse like yeah. my building here, and it's mm-hmm. it's small. It's not like a big big warehouse, but like. I'm kind of trying to do that here on like a smaller scale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, obviously I got to start somewhere, mm-hmm. you know, I couldn't, sure. couldn't, couldn't get the big warehouse just yet. But no, like, it's yeah. coming. It's yeah. coming. Yeah. It's, it's coming. coming yeah. For sure. But yeah, no, same thing. Like same concept. Like, you know, I want to be able to have like other creative people here. Like, you know, like you guys, yeah. like mm-hmm. we, we met up a couple times, mm-hmm. you know, prior to doing the show, just to like meet up, Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, but like it's stuff like that getting together at a cool, yeah. just a cool spot. Yeah. And just a good spot to bring it all together. Yeah. Dude, this place is legit. Yeah. This Actually, place is fire, bro. When I came thanks, here, man. I was like, whoa, this mm-hmm. is real. Like, somebody in this yeah. area is doing this. Yeah. And which I know. It's crazy. I brought that up yesterday. Like, the first time I sat in this chair and I was sitting here looking at all this stuff, man, I was speechless. Yeah. I didn't know what to say. Only though, because, like, this is where we want to take it. So it's just cool to, like, see it right before our eyes. Like, damn, like, this shit is really possible. Yeah. You're doing yeah. it right in front of us. Yeah. yeah. And then you can, you know, you could take, you know, everything, you know, and just make it better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I think uh, you're involved in the the think tank, right? Or the it's it's like the innovation center. No, not really. I mean, I know what it is. Yeah. I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, when we went there one time, they actually mentioned Wilkesbury Power. 
Oh, okay. They were telling us about it, and that's how oh, we okay. first heard about it. Oh, interesting. But down there, there's like a big creative space where yeah, they, yeah. they rent to creatives like to like have access to that space. Like it's like not utilized year. as much as it probably could no, or not. should be. Definitely not. Yeah, it's definitely so not. underground. It, it would be so hard. Like you would literally have to be seeking that to like find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were going to do it, but it just didn't make sense with our hours. Like, it just didn't yeah. make sense with, like, our schedules and stuff. But how cool would it be if you had, like, a space and you could, like, rent out other spaces for other creative people? Oh, and totally. Like, just bounce off of each other mm-hmm. and make separate incomes, and then you're just holding this whole building. That'd be so cool. Yeah. That'd be gnarly. The slide, the fucking yeah. swirly slide in the yeah. middle. <laughs> no steps. No <laughs> steps. Nah, I don't no care step. if you're 900 years old. You got to slide down that fucking yeah. slide. How you get up? You just gotta climb it? <laughs> Scale it, rock climbing. No, like, a, like a, <laughs> one of those ladders, like, the, in the wrestling the, rooms. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. Yeah, one of the rope. Yeah, you yeah. start doing all this wild shit. Yeah, to be dope. That's the cool. yeah. That's the dream, though. That's where we want to take it. Like, just be able to like. That's like me and him are kids at heart. Like, we just want to fucking have fun, man. Yeah, literally yeah. just have fun. And so am I. I like, like, you know, like I'm like 10, 12 years older than you guys. You know what I mean? But like I'm yeah. still like, mm. you know what I mean? Like I'm still there too. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Because you, you still have be. that creative gene within you. A lot of people lose that over time when they just work they that do. nine to five job that they fucking yeah. hate. Yeah. You didn't lose it. And yeah. no, though we still have it. I probably almost lost it though. Yeah. You know, you like so? Yeah, probably. And Was like until like until I life? started until I started the mm. show, I think. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I I mean like I was like I was creating content, you know, like for like the family business and doing some stuff there, <laughs> but not like a pot like not like I am doing this. Yeah. You know, but um I don't know. I guess because I didn't ever start something and do something on my own like mm. this, I think I probably, I felt like I was going to like, well, I guess I never thought I was a creative. I think I maybe said it on, on your yeah. show, but like, I didn't think I was a creative person, you know, until I started like trying to do something like yeah. this. And mm-hmm. that's like so many people tell me like, you know, this is creative. Like mm. you're super creative. Like you created this space. Yeah. Like everything about this is like, is your vision. Like, you know, the, the, the brick wall, like, mm. like just the look, everything, like everything about it. It's like, it's also, it, it's like, it's, it's expression. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? So like it's self-expression. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the whole show is self-expression. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and same doubt. thing for you guys. Like, I'm sure it's like the same, it's the same thing. Like your show, like it's self, mm. it's, it's an expression of yourself because you're having on people that y- you like and that are doing things that like you guys want to do. Yeah. And you know, just, it's just all the same like-minded people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you yeah. get to be yourself in a creative venture. Like if you go work at a restaurant you got to fit that mold of that restaurant you got to be one of them and you got to be an employee and you got to follow that that mindset and it's just like when you get to follow your own creative endeavor you don't got to do that you get to be you you get to say whatever the hell you want whenever you want yeah and that's one thing you. i think is really cool about it too yeah. you're not being suppressed in a creative endeavor as you are in many other realms of ventures that people take on in today's society so yeah yeah and, and like it. and like darian said earlier um, like you said, like you didn't like follow the rules. You were like, yeah. right. <laughs> the I was the same shirt. way. I was the same way. Mm-hmm. Literally my whole life, like the same way. Like I, I didn't conform. Like I would never conform to like yeah. anything. Yeah. Like I, I didn't follow the rules, but it was, it, but it wasn't like a real bad way. It was just in things I didn't, I wasn't interested mm-hmm. in yeah. things I didn't want to do, you know? And I, mm-hmm. it's so crazy. I think the three of us literally are all like all experienced the same thing throughout yeah. our lives. It was just like, like I said, like you're not lazy. You're, you're not. Like you're not, yeah. You may have had a bad attitude, but really, you didn't have a bad attitude. You just, just, you just didn't like what you were doing. So, like, you didn't want to do it. Yeah, you know what I sure. mean. For sure. Like, it's just crazy how, how that happens. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, life is crazy, man. It gets lost life within people. Some people just, I don't, I don't know what it. And that's even what we were talking about yesterday. Like, I don't know when in life people decide to let go of that, or if they ever do. If it's still there and it just sucks to think about, but yeah, I don't know why some people never just just pick up the camera and go for it or whatever your yeah whatever it is, is. Yeah, yeah it could be anything it could yeah. literally be anything it could be you want to um i don't know just become a painter because all, yeah. all you know? kids yeah. all kids have that in them every single child i've ever met had some kind of creativity or imagination or something that they want to do even like as simple as coloring on paper like you notice how creative kids are and over time like i don't know what it is in people but they lose it they lose touch with that but i think that's just from that mold that I was talking about before. When you got to fit a mold, you kind of have to lose that. You can't be creative working at a desk, just typing away all day with your shoulders hunched over like this. There's no creativity there. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. And like, just going back to going back to like, you know, even as a kid, like when you would do anything as a kid, like I'm talking like young kid, you yeah. know, like, mm-hmm. like you would do, you would try anything. You would like do anything. It didn't matter because you yeah. didn't care what you didn't, you didn't know the difference. Like, like, um, you know, if you fell down, you're just going to get back up because yeah. like, it's just in your nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, you know, if you, or if you failed at something as like a, a kid, like a real young kid, I'm talking mm-hmm. like, 
you know, maybe like five, six, seven, yeah. you don't even know, mm-hmm. right? Like if you, you screwed something up or you did it the wrong way. Yeah. Like th- the crazy part is like your parents and everybody would still tell you, Hey, good job. Like yeah, you, you did right. great. Like, yeah. but like, like even if it sucked, people are still as a kid, as a little kid, even if whatever you did sucked and you failed, mm. people are still going to clap for you. Yeah, that's true. You know, but now, but, but, but then once you become an adult, like you get bashed, which is like yeah. crazy to me, and I think people need to yeah, that's true. Like adopt that um, that kid mentality. Yeah, like like if you if you try to like just like I said, like thinking back to like when you were a super like a super young kid. Yeah, and no matter what you did, whether whether you, you succeeded at it or not, like you still did it, mm. and you were happy about it, mm-hmm. and you were like proud of it, even if yeah. it you know like it didn't matter. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. Think about how exciting every everything seemed when you were a kid. Everything, you know? and so like with that, you wanted to try and experiment with everything. I gotta go grab something. Keep talking. Okay, cool. So with that, you wanted to try and experiment all these things that like gave this light bulb in your head. Yeah. Right? And I think that's what Bill was getting at. Like when we're older, I think we should really make it a point to keep on experimenting and keep on like looking at things and and, and knowing that, oh, this looks interesting to me. Why don't I try this? Instead of just immediately chalking it up like, no, I can't do that. Or no, that's not for me. Yeah. Like just staying curious and, well, s- and staying experimental. How do you teach somebody that's like lost in that way though, that that is still an option and you can think and act that way or you can still be creative and feel like a kid or how do you like tell somebody that now who's already lost touch with that? Well, that's hard, man, because like I have people in my life that, you know, you have people you love and you have people you love who are still, they have a little hint of like, you know, ambition there, something, but, but they yeah. won't go out and take action. And you just want to like, for me specifically, like I just want to give them that push. Like, yo, you can do it. You can. Yeah. But ultimately I think you, you obviously know you can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Yep. Ultimately they have to decide within themselves to listen to their own voice. Mm. Like it's your own voice. And it's that force within you that, that you're pulled to certain things that you might be interested yeah. or excited to try. So you have to get in tune with the, with your own voice and say, you know what, I am gonna try this. You know what, I am gonna you know put some effort here and see how this thing goes. Yeah, you know what I mean. You have to get in tune with that, and you can't let other people think for you because like as people get older, us young kids, we know about it. Like they tell you, oh no, you can't do that. That's not for you. You know, just do something safe. Go yep. get the four hundred one k. Go get the yep. go get this. The pension. Yeah, the pension, Marcia. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, what do you got there, Bill? Yeah. All right. Yeah. It. So this is this is my my son oh, Braden. He's fuck he's yeah, like that's cool. at, you know at the time of this recording, he's like like 16, 17 months old, right? But um. But yeah, uh, like obviously he's so young. <laughs> yeah, we gotta make sure I hold this up uh, for the right camera here. Yeah, so here it is. This uh, Braden made this at daycare. Yeah, you nice. know, and um, I don't know, man. It's just like I, I know it, it's 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 silly, but yeah. like you know, obviously he had help from like the teachers and stuff. But he didn't like he didn't you know he's so mm-hmm. young he didn't really um you know really do it all all on his own, you know. But like still like it's um is it a Frankenstein? I I don't know maybe yeah kind <laughs> of I, I think I think it kind of is because it was around like Halloween time they okay. made it nice um. But yeah, that, like you uh, could tell, like he was just smacking them things on there, gluing. Yeah, them, but he might have had a vision. Like, he might yeah, have had a vision. Yeah, like, but he, Yo, I want it to look like this kind. Yeah, of, yeah. Right? But mm-hmm. it's just like you know, like it's things like this that you know I'm gonna hang this up here in the studio. Um, that's why I brought. That's why I have. That's why it's here. That's sick. Um, but you know, just going back to like that creative thing yeah. as a kid, like yeah, you know, like again, he didn't really know what he's doing. Like no one's gonna tell him that that sucked. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like everyone's just gonna be like, hey, good job. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Like that's yeah. so cool. Like everyone's gonna say that, yeah. but like if you did that as an adult, everyone's gonna be like, "Yo, what the hell's wrong with you?" <laughs> or yeah, they'd give you four point three billion dollars for that thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, one or the other. It's <laughs> yeah, one yeah, or the other. One <laughs> the other. It's, it's 50 shot. Yeah, it might be hilarious. the conviction at which you create it, right? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I noticed who, who that, knows? like with my nephew at the time, though, like his ass would draw like, like just yesterday he was sitting at my table, he was like drawing things on paper, cutting them out, and he wanted to. He has his paper on my uh, fridge that he just glues all these things on. He literally just drew like a bunch of like red and purple squiggles on a paper. He was like, Uncle Kevin, will you cut my, uh, he was like, it's a uh, cotton candy emoji. That's literally what he told me it was. And in his mind, his, that his, thing his, on a was. paper was co- as it was a cotton candy emoji. I'm seeing this little blob in a paper. <laughs> he didn't know what I'm it like, was. What is going on here? But like, that's what kind of what I was referring to before. Like these kids and their imagination runs so crazy. And at some point people just they lose that mm. yeah it sucks yeah so but i think it's so important just to encourage people still yes. like no matter no matter your age you know what i mean yeah. no matter age just encourage people and like you know part of me framing this you know is like i don't know it's just cool to me yeah yeah you know what i mean like having that, that and, and, and then just be able to encourage them to continue to do you know as he gets older and realizes mm. like 
you know, and actually starts maybe attempting to be yeah. more creative, whether it's drawing, painting, whatever mm. it is. Like, yeah, it could be whatever. It could be anything. Whatever he's pulled to. Mm. Like, that's that's the experimental part of it. Like, maybe you see a drawing and you go, "Wow, man, I think I could draw something cool." Yeah. You try, you try, and just like, eh, maybe I'm not, a, maybe I'm not an artist. But then you see somebody snowboarding, you're like, "Oh man, snowboarding looks super fun. Let me try that." And maybe maybe it sticks. Maybe it doesn't. But I think it's just it's that process. What do you like? What don't you like? Trial and, and keep error. going yeah. in the direction of the shit that you like to do. Mm. Yeah. Right? But you have to have consistency. Like uh, Kevin and I talked about this when we first started our podcast. Because at first it was for fun. Like at first it was like, let's do this thing for fun. But then like there is some, I think there's some legit wisdom in, in retaining a childlike attitude. But also you, you have to come with the seriousness of a man as well. Yes. Because if you're all emotion and intuition and creation, you might be naive in your progression you might never a be able to mm. pick this off the ground and and use it to actually create something bigger than yourself it might yeah. just be for play right which is which is the mind of a boy but with the mind of a man you might actually be able to like create something like you need some logic you need some like an analysis with this whole thing you need some strategy to actually like make this thing real you know what I mean? It can't just be one or the other. It has to kind of be a, a co-creation of both things. Definitely. Like with being childlike, you also must, you know, be strategic. And, yeah. And you got to be yeah. it like, you know, be, it becomes like a business and you have yes. to be able to think like that. Then yes. too, yes. Not just yes. like, well, hey, I'm just going to keep creating this stuff in my yeah. basement. And what's going to come mm -hmm. of it? I, nothing unless you do something yeah. to yeah. make it become something, you know. Yeah. Sadly, that's a reality you see a lot of the time, too. Some people just want to stick primarily to just being like a creative and just doing that. And that's great. That's literally what this whole conversation is about. But like he's saying, a lot of people do lack that emotional intelligence to be able to do other things with this creativity, this newfound creativity that you have or this newfound thing that you're really good at. Some people get really lost in that that realm of just wanting to be the creator. Yeah, that doesn't you can't be yeah. super successful that way. Yeah. yeah, but it makes sense because, you know, if you if you start to treat it seriously with that comes criticism mm -hmm. with that comes taking on a bunch of risk. Yep. With that comes maybe failing. Yep. Letting people down, you know, um, who knows what that might do to my conscience. So yeah. there's a whole lot that comes with that that you have to like you have to craft yourself into a durable person to be able to withstand those punches, roll with them and keep on pushing forward and make that thing real. Yeah. Right. But, but even going back to like the, like you said, like, you know, like when you're saying about like, you have to, you have to have like the intelligence at least to kind of get yourself to the, maybe that next step or yeah. that next level. But like maybe like a way around it is like, you can always partner with somebody. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like find yeah. a business partner. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So say you're like that super, super creative person, mm -hmm. but you don't have the business sense whatsoever, mm -hmm. but you know enough to say like, Hey, Maybe this could be a business, but yeah. I don't know how to do it on my own. I can't do it. Yeah. Um, not that they don't want to, mm. but like maybe they just don't, they don't have that or don't have That's like, a good point. you know what I mean? So like you can Very always point. find somebody like you or you or yeah. me or somebody like that in their life mm -hmm. that obviously that they trust enough mm. that like if they partner with somebody like you, maybe you could take it to the moon. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. like, but the, the, they'll just keep doing the all the creative side mm -hmm. of of the of whatever it is, right? Whatever yeah. the business is, you know, they might just be the super creative person behind mm -hmm. the scenes, and then you're the you're the entrepreneur part piece of the puzzle yeah. out front, CEO mm -hmm. on the street, whatever. You know, maybe that could be you know for somebody that doesn't know how to or thinks like, oh, I can yeah. never, I can never do that other half, then then find somebody. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Find somebody. Find somebody that could do that. Because somebody probably would. Yes. Yeah. Like if they believe in somebody you and buy in. Yeah. yeah. If they believe in you and see yeah. it, it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, oh wow, that, dude, like you're super talented. Why don't you ever do anything with it? And most people be like, oh, I don't know, because I don't know how. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But you find that person that knows how, mm -hmm. boom, that's, to the moon. That's, both of you. That's a nugget. I hope you guys take that part right there. You gotta accept nugget. that, man. Bill, right. you might got, I was just gonna say you might gotta yeah, throw the, the, the goat chain. chain. I'd yeah. throw my own goat chain. That's a nugget ah, for sure. There we go. Nugget. This, is, this is the goat chain. Yeah. Bell's oh, officially yeah. goatified. Wait, you're around the wire. You have to go oh, out to the wire, I think. Yeah, there you go. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm like a rookie. I'm yeah. a rookie here. On, he just hit up Aliante. <laughs> I stout. I'm, I'm all tied up. I'm, yeah. like, I'm like putting myself in knots. Let's no, go. That's tough. The goat. Bill, the goat. I can see you rocking a fat like what do you think? Cuban link. Like, you think? Straight out the Gucci main book. One of those <laughs> and like yeah, I'll make it. your neck hurt. You gotta copy yeah, that. I will copy one. Like one weigh, weighing me down like yeah. this during yeah. the shows. <laughs> that's one day. One Christmas, you're just gonna get a box in the mail. From the go getter is just gonna be a fucking I'm re I'm thirty three millimeter Cuban link <laughs> chain. I'm gonna be waiting for that. I'm, gonna, I'm waiting for it. Come on, man. Say less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, I got the goat chain. Fuck yeah. It's kind of cool. 
Have Not you ever that. done that before? The goat chain thing with anybody? No, this is brand Let's new. Go. Let's go. This is brand new. Boom, boom, Let's boom, go. boom. Go, goat chain. Yes, goat go. chain. So should I make it like a thing here? Yeah, Absolutely. Please. Make the it a thing. Yeah. You just got to ice like some like stern business guy out when you drop some real hard real estate advice. Yeah. He's got to ice him out with the goat chain. Like, He'll have no idea what he's looking at, but you just like, got to throw it put, around his put neck. Put the goat chain on, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's good. This is, it. this is the first um first like official goat chain episode. Remember, it, ha- it happened here. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget it. Look, you're falling back out of the and out we'll, of the camera frame. No, bro. move up. My bad. People, Am I good here? people aren't gonna see you. <laughs> there he is. All right, he's, he's back. Cool. He's back. I'm back. Let's yeah. go. No, you were good. You were just kind of just just al- almost out. Almost right out. on the cusp. Right on the cusp. All like right. you got that. You got that. We were talking about before. You got that tall torso. Got a long torso. Long. Nice Dude. torso, man. Yeah. You got nice posture. Thank you. Bro. I mean, I try. You do. We're both we're both hunched over. Yeah, that's why I say all like the time. I got the gamer back. I gotta rest my arm on the table. When I do that for so long, my back gets stiff. So yeah, I gotta gotta come with moderation. Yeah, I'm trying my best. Should have told you to button that shirt up too, so we can oh, hide not. that. You gotta put it out oh, there. Oh so no! Can see. Oh yeah, Ohio State. No way. Let's go. So you are like you're you're negative one on the goat ch- on the work for goat <laughs> chain to earn the goat chain back. <laughs> yeah. You have to like drop two nuggets. Yeah, to, we're, to we're completely against yeah. each other in that field. Too. Yeah, Bill, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you guys know he's a Dallas Cowboys fan. Yeah. It's, that's no good over here too. Yeah, Penn State Cowboys, crazy. <clears throat> I know. How does that happen to one person though? Like, what in like life leads to that? Well, I think because I grew up like in like the Emmett Smith era, oh, like Troy really? Aikman. Wow. Yeah, 90s. Like I was like a young kid, so yeah. like you know, I think just seeing, I you know, I didn't I didn't know any better as like a kid. Yeah. You know, and watching watching them, you know do so well is yeah. like how yeah. could you not be a fan yeah you know true. some people are like oh he's a bandwagon fan but like what is that? how did, how did i know I mean, that's I was a kid. everybody was super... becomes a fan of a, a team either because of the bandwagon aspect of your family liking a team or the bandwagon aspect of them being good those are like the only two ways most people pick yeah. a team ever so yeah. realistically everybody's a bandwagon yeah absolutely right i mean that's how you feel like you become become the fan those right? are like, like the only two ways you'd really ever become a fan of a football or any team unless you just said hey one day i'm gonna start liking baseball today and i like the mess yeah nobody does that no so some people no. say what well, like their uniform that's fair yeah yeah but you know but you know what like for me now like you know uh at least in the last few years what also shifted for me in, in terms of the nfl because i honestly like, i really don't watch the nfl as much as i used to um but for me now more so it's following the specific individual players yes mm. yes right yes, so yes. like for me you know like uh saquon barkley yeah you know he's a penn state guy he's tough. right yeah badass yeah, Saqu- saquon's badass he's yeah he deserves he, he's probably got a bigger way bigger goat chain than me yeah. Yeah. Saquon, so. but but like i'm not a giants fan obviously i'm yeah. a cowboys fan but I'm, I'm a saquon barkley fan it's mm-hmm. mm. so like i'll still like i'll root for saquon barkley you know what i mean like it's I weird I it's that. weird i like saquon too i played against his brother did you yeah we're at uh, ali barkley I played him in a quarterfinal playoff game. Um, he, they played against, they play, they were Whitehall. We were Valley West, and we beat them. I believe he's in the NFL now too. Ali, yeah, is Barkley, yeah, I think. Oh, no, I think he's at Penn State. He might be. Is he at Penn State? I think he is. I heard somebody mention recently that I was talking to that Barkley's brother was on some team, but he yeah, was but uh, like didn't like get really any time. Ali Barkley, like Temple. Yeah. Oh, okay, right, interesting. Uh, Allie Barkley, 38, running back, 2022, redshirt freshman. Is that him? I'm guessing that's him. That's probably that's him, probably right? Be, yeah. yeah. Temple's fire. Their atmosphere is pretty cool. I went to one Temple game at the Eagle Stadium. Yeah, it says right up. here, brother of, brother of Penn State, All-American, Yeah, Saquon. Me yeah. with the fake Word. news over here. We beat him. Fake news. <laughs> Took yeah. him down. Yeah, Temple. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, so like, yeah, for me, like it's like following players. Yeah. And the, you know what I mean? Like, mm. from, you know. Just from watching them play in college to now, then mm. following them like wherever they go in the NFL and just like kind of seeing like yeah. how they grow and you know what I mean? It's like yeah, it is cool. That's definitely like I mean that's probably one of my most favorite parts about football in general. It's just like that's why I watch multiple games of all different teams. Well, fantasy football. I know like this motherfucker hates fantasy <laughs> football. Can't stand every it, time every I played time. like one time my whole life. Really? Every yeah. time me and my Can't friends get to talking about fantasy nah. football, he gets so fucking tight. But that's <laughs> like. Like yeah right that's now. why though like i like following individual players so much though because you get like you almost kind of get attached to certain players because they're like a part of your team so like you kind of follow them on all their social medias or seeing what they're doing in their day-to-day life and playing football is what i always wanted to do so i really look up to a lot of those people like that are doing that have achieved a dream i once have and they're living at large i think that shit's so cool too yeah it's cool i don't really follow nfl too too much i think the number one sport that i'm really into right now is mma 
UFC. Yeah, I love watching MMA. That's cool. Like the rivalries and like the styles yeah. and the backgrounds and like I think that's mm. just really cool. It's like modern day gladiators. Yeah. Like yeah, you're bad watching badass t- dudes. Yeah, I don't know if there's any warriors, spe- just get after it. Yeah, I don't know if there's any specific like athletes like that you like to focus on for your podcast, but like one day any, like any yeah, any. We're, any. We're the same way. We'll take anybody, but we really want to get, have like a lot of dope ass UFC fighters on. That'd one be day. super cool. Like, there's a lot of UFC fighters I'm very interested in their like mindset and like what they're doing in general because that's like a fucking crazy life to live. It's a crazy life yeah. to live, man. Crazy. You life. risk everything going in there. Oh yeah. We had yeah, a that's that's brutal. We had a pro fighter come on our podcast, uh, Chris Gritalo. Shout out, real savage. But we're trying. To, there's a UFC guy in our area that I train with a few times, and he's a wizard. Like a legit wizard, and his name is Jimmy Hedis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've and heard I'm, yeah, I'm I know trying to name. get him on our yeah. podcast, but Jimmy, if you see this, bro, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, check out On The Stack. Does, does he, do, do you know, wait, so you, does he know, he said he knows who you are. Yeah, no? yeah, we trained oh, together okay. a few times. For oh, sure. all right. Yeah. Yeah. And his brother was like my coach for a while. So, yeah, I, I know him, um, but I don't know if he's like, he's not really into, like, big into talking about his career. He's super humble. Yeah. He's super humble. So, he kind of likes to just stay in the shadows. And just be a ninja on the low. Yeah, yeah. Like Shinobi on the low. Fire. Yeah. I, can, I can honor it. Yeah, but shout out Jimmy, though. He yeah. Me a lot. He's shout a out, cool shout dude. out Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Word. Man, this is uh, this is awesome. Yeah, man. This is so yeah, cool. No, it's a long time coming. This is a fucking great podcast. Yeah. 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 Bill, I appreciate you as a human, man. I like, really do. I likewise, thank you. bro. I thank you for just being you, being the man that you are. I mean, you took us in like yeah. baby gazelle. And yeah. he, just, he just shows us the ropes. Yeah. He gives us wisdom. Um, he leads the way mm-hmm. and he has a, he has a beautiful podcast here. He has a beautiful thing he's building here. So seriously, man, I can't thank you enough for letting us in on, you know, it's your world. We're living in it, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. I'm living, I'm living in yours though too. Kind of. So you. yeah. 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 No, it's yeah. cool. It, it literally is just as cool for me mm-hmm. as, as you say it is for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's cool. It really is. That's cool. You know, it, the feeling, the feeling is mutual. Cause like, like I, I mean, I just, I just genuinely like helping people. Mm-hmm. In anything, like yeah. even if somebody asks me for help on something else, like as long as I know how to help them, I'll do yeah. it. You know yeah. what I mean? But like, you know, shout out to Mondo again. For, uh, yeah, shout out to Mondo Come for, Link- yeah, for yeah. linking. Yeah, Mondo Salvanti. We'll never get to see that, like that initial time that we linked up, or yeah. the conversations we had outside of us ever meeting in person from the start. But yeah, all that stuff is never on video. But yeah, you took us in with open arms, and you were. Comp- I mean, I didn't expect you to be anything different, but. You blew my expectations away for sure. No You're doubt. You're a great dude, Bill. Or no thanks. doubt. Yeah, yeah, no, it was cool. Like, you know, like I see, you know, I guess because like I'm also the type of person where obviously I've, I've done this long enough. Obviously, I know a little bit about what I'm doing kind of, yeah. right? You know? Of course. And, you know, to see somebody like you guys, I, I could, you know, when, when he reached out to me, I'd already kind of knew who you guys were a little bit, you know, and we exchanged a, a yeah. DM like a long time ago. Forever just a ago. real quick, like you sent me something like, yo, you pumped mm-hmm. me up, man. Thanks for this. And yeah. it was like super brief. But then to be honest, I probably kind of actually forgot, yeah. you know, in, in between then and however long ago that was. And the time that Mondo texted me was like, yo, hey, these two guys, you know, Darren and Kevin doing this podcast, go getters yeah. like they they would love to meet you, see your studio, blah, blah, blah. Mm. I responded back to him like instantly. I'm like, yeah, of yeah. course, man. hundred percent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like I see what you guys are doing. You guys are doing you guys are doing a great thing. It's awesome. Like Thank you guys you. are you guys are doing like like what I'm doing, too. And I love it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I, I get just as freaking fired up about what you're doing as as much as I do about what I'm Thank doing. You. Mm-hmm. you know, so like I see what you guys are doing, and I'm like, man, whatever I can do to help make it better. It's a blessing. Like Seriously. that's it. And it's like I responded. I'm like a Tamando. I forget what I said, but I was like, yeah. I was like, of course. I'm like, give him my mm-hmm. number. Like, whatever. We yeah. literally met. I think the next day. Yeah, yeah, literally. Sure. It was that quick. Yeah, we yeah. pulled the trigger, man. We got it, right it in. It was like I was like, yeah tomorrow yeah i was like yeah come come by tomorrow yeah that's, i was afraid that, to reach out yeah initially yeah you yeah, were i was like ah should i text Why? him like because I, I just was unsure like who you were okay I, I, I was unsure like where your head was was i was i intimidating looking yeah no 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 i think like what you built was kind of intimidating like yeah uh maybe he'll think like he's he's beyond our level yeah it's not worth his time no dude everything's mm. worth my time yeah. that's good if you would have reached out to me on your first episode mm. i still would have talked to you that's awesome. I still would have. That's the, that's why I think it was so cool. Like when I initially shot you that DM, I think I literally said to you, I was like, see at the top. That's like something yeah. I always say to people like yeah. that. Yeah. Like I want to meet up with one day or somebody I feel like is out of reach, but like, I'm just going to shoot you a DM anyways. I literally said, I'll see you at the top. Is that like what you I said? said? I think. Yeah. I, is I, it? Pull it look into pull it I, I got to look it up. I'm looking at it right. Yeah. I think you sent, some, you sent to my podcast page. You sent to the, it's very possible person. I forget. 
But um. But I, I remember, and like I was saying, it was like the and like it was, our it was second from like your third. personal page, probably right. Yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, but going back home, I just want to I, because I can't do two things at once. But like how you said, like like oh maybe you like you thought that I might have been like too far above. Yeah. Right. True. Like for me, like I literally there's no such thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And people that have that attitude, like that's that that's a that's a terrible attitude to have. Like if like if I had that attitude about you that I felt like I was above you. Yeah. That's because oh, I'm not. Yeah, maybe you know I, I mean? should drop that attitude as well. Like nobody is above you. Well, I you mean, know? some people will think that they are above you. No, I mean, like you know what I mean. From from like the lower guy's perspective, like he's just he's just been in it longer. He's just more experienced. Yeah, I've know? just I've literally just done it longer. Yeah, I've done it more times, more mm-hmm. reps, mm-hmm. longer. Um, but yeah, I mean, like honestly, like to me, like I said, like, if you would have reached out, like at episode, like yeah. if you would, dude, you you should have did it then when you messaged yeah. me. If you would have asked me then, I'd have been like, yeah, mm-hmm. let's do it. I've always been the type though, man. Like I hate, like, and even this is, remains true to this day. I hate asking people for stuff. Like I, I never want like our relationship to ever seem like I am just like with you to get something from you. Like I, I got never you. wanted yeah, yeah. that to yeah, like. Yeah. But here I found I already Did have you? it up. Where is it? Where, where is it? Cause I got a, what, what page was it? It was from? off. It was off my my personal page. But to what I, to what account of mine? Yours. It was your personal. My one. personal. Oh, okay, that's why I get. But yeah, okay. I was just like, hey man, just came across your page today and just wanted to reach out and say, keep killing it, man. I'm a podcaster as well from the Wilkes-Barre area and seeing your success has really fired me up. So congrats, or congrats, brother. Keep up the good stuff. Then you responded, hey, bro, thanks for reaching out. Appreciate it with the hands. And I just said, of course, brother. See you at the top. And you said, let's fucking go. I did. Yeah, let's look at that. Go. Look at that. Come look on, at that. Man. And that's yeah. what happens. Like, yeah. Like, I, yeah. And the thing is, like, I also, like, I, I reply basically like, to, like, to everybody. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I'll reply to, like, anything. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like, I don't think we were following each other. So, like, I went to, like, my, like, that request box or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. I still checked out, like, every once in a while. Uh-huh. And occasionally, there, there's usually 20 spam messages in there. Yeah. But then there's there's one, one real one, one, one real Kevin, yeah. you know, yeah. in there. But um, And that was June. <laughs> I think it said June 29th. Our first episode aired. Let's see. I could pop this shit up. So crazy. Six months ago. So, that would have been... Yeah, June June May 29th. 16th. So, literally a month. Like, we were literally four episodes in, probably. Maybe at, even three. At that point. Like, yeah, like yeah. three, four episodes. <sighs> yeah. It's so crazy. It's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. so weird to look back on that. Like, yeah, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just, you know... Like I said, like, you know, I'm also of the mindset, like, you're never too good to do anything. Like, yeah. anything. I believe Nothing. that, too. Yeah, you know I mean? Like, because my whole life growing up, I've done, I've done like, everything. Like, job-wise, like, mm-hmm. I literally still, like... Like, it's not even above me to take out the trash at my office at work. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, we have a cleaning person, but, like, I actually still, like, will take out yeah. the trash. Like, you know what I mean? Like, somebody would be like, dude, like, you're not, like, you know, you're not, like, you you pay somebody else to do that. Like, yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Like, to, and we do, right? Yeah. But, like, but like it's not it's not above me to mm. clean up something or take out the trash. Mm. And, like. You lose humility when you live your life that way. Like, me and, he and I were both literally janitors. Like, that's why he and I will always say, like. You got to treat the CEO with the same respect you'll treat the junior. Yeah, hundred percent. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah. if you're sitting down at a conference table with a multi-billionaire, treat him the same way you treat your janitor that's mopping your hallways and your bathroom and stuff like that. It's the same. Exactly. We all want the same shit. It just starts from different places. Yeah. yeah. And like just growing up, like I said, like I've literally done like everything in a in, in like in, in you know my job. Like I've done everything from yeah. I literally painted the outside of the building as mm-hmm. a kid, helped put a roof on. Yeah. Um. You know. I used to cut the grass and weed whack and then, then eventually I got promoted to coming inside. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like literally I was just like the outside like groundskeeper, yeah. right? The outside and, dog. Yeah, huh? I was the outside dog, sweat yeah. my ass, get stung by a thousand bees. Yeah. It literally happened once I not a thousand, but a lot. Um, character though. Yeah. But yeah. like so like I like I literally like I, it's not like I just, you know, you know, people might think, Oh, like, oh, he probably never did any hard grunt work. Like, cause people only see you going back to what I said earlier in the show. People mm-hmm. only see you for what you're doing, yep. like right now. The people flashy don't lights like, and the yeah, like all this cool yeah. shit. It's all they see. You know what I mean? Like people don't people don't know that like you know like I used to be like that. You know, I used to I did all the grunt work, mm-hmm. literally like all the grunt work yeah. always. Like and I still do some. <laughs> yeah. I still do grunt work. Yeah. yeah, like I still do. You know, for sure. I mean, Everything like you me got too. to. Me too. You know? never, nobody will ever get to see us kicking the shit out of them garbage cans, like <laughs> kicking them, shit, slamming bags on the ground, <laughs> mad as shit, gritting your teeth like this. But yeah. that's like. Those are the days that I, I had both my headphones in. I was listening to podcasts and I knew like then and there, like that's the shit that I was going to be doing. Like that's what I wanted to do. And I was pissed off that I wasn't doing it. I finally fucking did it. That's all you got to do. Good for you, bro. Just got to go through that bullshit. Boom. Boom. Let's that's go. It. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Let's Fuck go. yeah. So I think we might leave it on that note. Fuck yeah, man. Cool, man. Oh, you, you know, you deserve the, you deserve, oh, the, yeah. you deserve, I got a rock for that. You deserve the, the goat chain for let's this go. Let's go. Let's go.
Darren, I'm sorry. We no, didn't, it's okay, we didn't gift you the goat cheese. No, it's okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, like caught up again. I'm stuck around this thing. Here. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, there you go. Yeah, Kev. Let's Put that do on. It. Put Let's that on before it. we end so yeah, we get Kev. a little, Kev's little shot. Hold it, hold it up to your camera. Hold it up to your camera angle. Show, show that there he is. Kev's knighted on the Kev the on Goat the podcast. Got to get Kev the Goat. It up real quick. A little tricky. See if you can figure it out though. Of course, brother. I'm a I'm an expert linker. Are you? Of course. I don't know if he is. I don't no, know. Let's let's, not. let's find out. I'm calling bluff. Yeah. You should call. Put your bluff. comments below. It's like no. Yeah. <laughs> let, let everyone know. <laughs> Damn it! No, I had it. Uh oh. I'm fumbling. Guys, guys fumbling over no, here. Oh, fumbling. man, he's fumbling. All right, See, here, guys, try it. I fumbled. It here, look, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knight you here. Let me do it. You want to knight me? Let, let Bill do it. Oh, no. I'm really fumbling the bag today. Dropping the, look at you, bro. Uh, dropping the goat. Knight me up. Here we go. Let's go, guys. This is a once-in-a-lifetime on the stacks experience. You don't get this anywhere else. Oh, man, here we go. Here's you can't go right. anywhere else and receive the content. You're rubbing your neck there. It's all right. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Check me out. Show the people, man. Boom. Let's We're goaded. Go. Check this Let's guy go. out. Except that stupid Ohio State shirt. Oh, but but look at now, now the goat is I'll resting. I think it's very symbi or symbiotic. <laughs> symbolic. It's very symbolic because now we have the goat resting on the Ohio State. So I think we figured out. All right, all right, episode. all right, all right. You're taking it too far. You're taking, you're taking it too far. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. But, Bill, this is a fucking great experience to have you. This podcast yeah. is yeah. dope. Seriously, Thanks. you're fucking killing it, too. If nobody yeah. has told you that yet, you're fucking killing it. Thanks, man. So and are you guys. Thank you. Thank and you. I'm proud of you guys, like, what you're doing mm. like in the hard work because like i know what it takes yeah you know you guys know what it mm. takes and it's, yep. it's just cool to see other people doing mm. it and you know all trying to get together mm. and do good shit together yeah. and mm -hmm. but uh before we end where can uh where can our listeners uh find your show oh. go get his podcast youtube uh-huh spotify go get his podcast on ig uh-huh um, go getters fitness on IG. Mm -hmm. Go getters philanthropy on IG. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go getters gaming on IG. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. personal is Darian Tyson. D A R R I A N Tyson. Like Mike. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. My personal. Boom. Kevin Kasky. Mm -hmm. Instagram. That's all you need to know. Find mm -hmm. me there. Check it out. Like, subscribe. Peace. Love. Word. Love. Let's go. Yeah. I love it. Yo, honestly, seriously, this was so cool. And, Thank you, uh, man. I'm looking forward to uh, mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing what we what we all do yeah. together, and uh, I'm just super uh, I'm super glad we met. Seriously, Absolutely. Man. Well, we're locked in now, but we still both got to get to that top, so we'll still see each other up there. We're Don't going about together. That. Sure. Then, we, sure. then we go screen grab that one day and throw it in yeah. episode a thousand. When we're yeah, 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 fucking yeah. Got a million subscribers. Hell yeah, for sure. All right. Oh all right, yeah, guys. Thank you very very much, Mr. Bill. Absolutely. Bullet Bill. Bullet Bill. Bullet Bill. That's it. That's yeah. my new nickname, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. Thank you. All right. Let's go, guys. All right, Darian Tyson. Kevin Kasky on the Stacks Podcast in the Boomer Studio. Thanks Come for joining on. me. Boom. Let's go. Boom. Bam. Bam. Boom. Boom.